I need Jeffrey. I didn't know it was possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can everyone hear us online? I just want to do a test. Either on. Yeah, Danny, I can hear you. I can hear you again. Perfect. Okay, Thank great. you. All right, I got six o'clock. Let's call the meeting to order. Roll call. All right, Mitch Hobson. Here. James Coyle. Here. Scott Patchen. Here. Pam Lewis Randall is absent. Jared Bramerson. Here. Terry Moore. Here. Tyler Munson. Here. Yeah, All right, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, proof of posting. A copy of this notice was delivered on 1230. It was faxed to Star News and the State Bank of Cross Plains Black Earth Branch posted at the municipal building here and at the Black Earth Post Office and on our web page, um, www.blackearthwisconsin.com. Public input, is there any public input? Yep, uh, state your name and address please. Al Horn, uh, my own business at 1525 State Street. Yep. I guess the reason I'm here, it has to do with uh, Utility Commission um, and the increase in the electric rates. I had written a letter to the PFC about that. Um, since we've owned this business in this village, our utility rates have gone up over 20%. Same with our taxes, and things are getting a little out of hand. Um, the whole reason I wrote that letter to them was because I wanted our boys to be heard and we kind of looked to the board here to represent us with the PFC and Wyand Energy. Um, I did get a call from Danny uh, from the village here and she explained that Alliant had um, raised the rates and basically there was nothing you could do about it but all of these people have to answer to their board. So we'd be looking to people like you to tell them that the end users can't afford to just keep getting rate increases. So that's the, the only reason I'm here. I just wanted to explain why I wrote the letter. I'm encouraging you as a rep representing the taxpayers and the residents of the village to, you know, push back a little bit on this stuff and try to help us make a living. There's a reason that businesses aren't coming to this community. It costs too much. If we had known that things were going to turn out like this, I probably wouldn't have bought the business. So I appreciate your time and listening to me. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for coming. All right. And then uh, anybody else? Uh, discussion action item number five. This is Jeff Stanick. Um, and then obviously Brian's here. Um, this is to do the review of our electric utility, and it goes right into you know, what he was talking about and, and goes from there. I mean, and you can't not raise that. So, Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you. I can provide some insight on that you know, after this is all done. Um, so I work in a different community, um, actually, and the same thing is, is happening. Um, and I'll touch upon a lot of what is happening in Alliance Energy um, and how it affects um, small communities like this. Um, can you share? Yeah, you're just for questions, and it should allow you to. Most disabled participants screen share. Okay, there we go. Oh, okay. Oh, which one? I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. Um, some of these numbers might be small, um, <coughs> uh, but I'll try to do the best that I can to explain everything. Uh, there's also a handout too that will support some of what I'm talking about. Um, so what I'm here to do today is just um, give a <coughs> overview of the electric utility. Um, some industries reached out to me 
uh, Tupper wants to go about doing a uh, financial review of the electric utility and kind of why why the best fuel the electric is where it is currently. Um, so that's what I intend to do here is uh, provide facts based upon data, uh, PSC reports, financials, um, debt reports, things of that nature. Uh, so a little overview of our topics today. Um, before I get into anything, uh, and my apologies ahead of time if I bore people, um, I'll kind of try and get not to, to get too detailed. But I, I think what I'm going to present is just providing context on how the PSC sets rates and why they set rates and how that translates into your financial performance. So um, I'll touch upon that because it'll give you some context of, of where the electric utility is at. Um, so what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the, the PSD rate making process versus utility cash flows. Um, there, there's <coughs> differences there. Um, I'll look at some uh, financial performance, um, actual uh, 2020 to budget uh, 23 and the rate design. Um, I did look back all the way to 2005. Uh, originally when Mitch contacted me, I, I was only <coughs> 19. As I started digging more and more into the data, I started noticing more and more things. So I wanted to get a, a more of a holistic picture of how we got to where we are right now. I'm just going to move the microphone closer to you. Let's sure. Go. I can scream. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Um, I'll go through some historical cash and operating um, summaries, just, just some uh, key important figures as it relates to electric utilities, uh, especially municipal electric utilities in the state of Wisconsin. Um, other financial considerations and some options uh, for the electric utility finances. Uh, so before I go on, just a little introduction to myself, just so you know, I'm not blowing wind at you. Uh, a little bit of my background: um, I have a BBA in finance and accounting from UW Eau Claire. Um, I do have my my CPA back in 2009. I worked for about uh, 12 and a half years at Baker Tilly Virchow Kraus. Um, if you're not familiar with them, they're uh, CPAs and consultants uh, in Madison. Um, while at Baker Tilly, uh, I was a senior manager on the energy and utilities team where uh, we worked with utilities all over the country. Um, a lot in Wisconsin here, but also uh, all on the west coast, east coast, south. I worked with small utilities anywhere from like Mount Hope and um, very small utilities just like the Village of Black Earth all the way to the city of Seattle, city of Sacramento at our $5 billion company. So at Baker Tilly, pr primary job was a financial auditor, um, financial and grant auditor or single audit, uh, but I also have a lot of experience with utility rate studies, budgeting, financial analysis, um, things of that nature. My entire background begins with uh, uh, utilities. I did a brief stint 2018 at 2020 at the city of, Mad city of Madison as the water utility CFO. Um, basically finan financial management, uh, rate, case, uh, rate cases um, of the water utility. That's about a, a $500 million entity. I um, was only there for about 18 months. Uh, politics was a little bit too much for me in the city of Madison. Uh, <laughs> Not really fact-based, a lot of political um, things going on, so that was, you know, as an accountant, I'm not about politics, I'm about facts. So, um, luckily, upon utilities, my current employer, um, they reached out to me with, with an opening, a finance director opening. Um, upon utilities, I had been their auditor for, for 13 years prior, uh, very financially well run, um, so I, that's now currently where I reside. Finance director for the electric, water, and uh, sewer utilities, um, basically financial management. Um, I also reside uh, as a voting member on the WPPI Rates and Advisory Committee. So WPPI is our wholesale supplier, um, just like Alliant is your wholesale supplier. WPPI is 51 communities that pool their resources together um, to uh, own and operate generation and other services. And I sit on that, that rates committee. So just a little bit of my background, uh, uh, where I'm coming from, where my experience is, and, and how it's going to relate to what we're talking about today. So uh, start uh, with some, some some basics about the PSC, and my apologies if I bore you with this stuff, uh, but I think it's good context. So the PSC uh, really is the rate regulator for utilities, uh, that's electric and water utilities within the state of Wisconsin. That includes municipal-owned 
uh, and uh, investor owned, like Alliant Energy. Um, they do not set rates for um, cooperatives. Uh, they do for like ATC, American Transmission Company. Not only do they set rates, but they also are involved with uh, construction authorizations um, and other aspects of utility operations, including service rules. So a lot of what especially municipalities, municipalities do is at the direction of the PSC. There's not a lot that electric utilities can do because we are regulated. Uh, working in, in uh, states all over the country, Wisconsin is by far the most regulated, especially when it comes to utilities. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, so just a little context. Um, with the rate process, um, this is this is going to be the very similar for both IOUs and municipalities. Uh, the rate process is, you know, the first step is you create a revenue requirement. Okay, what what do we need to what do we need to operate the utility? What are our costs to operate the utility, and um, where is that revenue going to be generated from? Um, the cost of service is where are those costs. Uh, coming from, and the rate design is developing the retail rates based upon where the costs come from. So uh, the rate design, uh, when they develop re residential rates, commercial rates, um, industrial agricultural rates, those rates are determined based upon the cost drivers. So if a commercial customer costs more than a residential customer, their rates are maybe a little bit higher. Um, so that, that rate design is uh, the, the last step in the process. Uh, so the revenue requirement, so the, the cost recovery, the PSC allows for the utility rate recovery of day-to-day -day operation and maintenance, maintenance expenses, depreciation, that UF only, that means utility financed. So anything that is contributed, say a developer comes in and puts a, a development or a uh, customer pays for their electrical infrastructure, the PSC does not allow you to recover any of those costs and rates. So that's why I put you up only because that, especially small utilities, that can be a big amount. Um, taxes, uh, taxes is mainly the payment lieu of taxes. Uh, that's, a, that's a big one. Generally, the electric and water utilities are the largest taxpayers of a municipality. Um, and that is in the, the PSC uh, regulations. And then finally is uh, rate of return or uh, return on rate base. I'll go over that a little bit more in depth and give you examples of how that relates to here. So the rate of return, what that basically is, um, the, in, the, the net book value of the infrastructure you have in place. So all the poles, substations, all that, infrastructure used to provide energy to the customer, that is what you can earn a, a rate of return on. And it's the net book value. So it's what your original purchase cost less the accumulated depreciation. So what is the value as of today? Um, and I'll, I'll go through that a little bit uh, for uh, Let's uh, See, uh, so the, yeah, that we had the, uh, Rate of return uh, is typically based upon uh, the PSC benchmark is the 10-year T-bill at, at the time plus 2%. So that's not very much. Uh, it's meant to recover, uh, so the real meaning is it's meant to recover reasonable cash needs for capital projects, reserves, debt payments, and miscellaneous costs. I put a little caveat in here, may not cover all cash flows. It, depend, it depends upon the financial management of the utility. So, a little background there. Um, basics on the, the rate base, uh, basically it's the net value of your, your finance assets like I just mentioned, uh, and here's the calculation. It's just, what have you put into service? You know, what's your total uh, historical cost, plus some inventory you might have, mm -hmm. less cumulative depreciation, and that gives you your, your net investment in the rate base. Rate base. The reason I show you this is I'm going to be referring to it uh, in, in, in subsequent slides, and it's, it's a big driver in what you're recovering in rates currently. So that's, that's the PSC rate design um, versus uh, electric utility operation. This is your day-to-day -day cash flow. This is money taken in, money going up. So money received from customers, and then cash payments. That's for operations, capital, debt, any money that you're writing checks for or money is going out the door. 
or uh, municipal uh, municipal electric utilities. These are the primary uh, pay, uh, cash payments going out the door to purchase power. Generally, the, the most significant cost. Um, you have your operations, maintaining the system, um, meters, uh, lines, everything, uh, and then your A and G. That's all your administrative, your billing, uh, metering, all that stuff. A payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, that's a payment that is done every year to the city general fund. Uh, and that is a calculation that is set in Wisconsin state statute that uh, is not, usually don't, municipalities usually don't derivate from that. Uh, you have the ability to freeze it or lower it or eliminate it, but it's not usually a popular option. Uh, largely because the utility, keep in mind, the electrical water utility is the, generally the largest taxpayer. Uh, capital additions and replacements. So uh, basically fixing stuff uh, to make sure you have reliability. Uh, you can provide reliable service to customers, debt and principal payments, and then any other cash flow. So what's the main difference between the two? Well, there, there's two big differences. Uh, first and foremost is capital infrastructure. Remember from a couple slides ago, the uh, PSC, when they design rates, they allow you to recover utility finance depreciation. So what that means is the PSC recovers, uh, so it's, we'll use the substation project just because it's most relevant. If that were to cost, we're just going to say $1.5 million. So the life of that asset is probably 40 years. So what the PSC in their rate design, what they do is when they design the rates, that $1.5 million, you're going to recover that cost over 40 years. That's depreciation. Depreciation is non-cash, but the way that they allow you to recover at rates is over 40 years. Whereas, from the cash perspective, you pay 1.5 right now to build it. Whether you finance it or use cash internally, the money goes out the door now versus what you recover over 40 years. So there's obviously a big gap there. Um, so that's one of the big primary differences uh, between the PSU how they allow you to recover rates and the actual cash flow of the utility. Second biggest uh, difference is rate of return. So I mentioned the rate of return. Uh, it allows you to recover a certain percentage. Uh, your new rate is 6.5% on your net investment rate base. And what that basically does is it allows you to recover any remaining costs, not anywhere else in the rate of return calculator, excuse me, the the PSC rate design calculation. That's going to be your debt, your principal your interest payments, your cash reserves, uh, capital projects, anything else. So those are ex very big differences uh, between how how you actually what goes into the customer's rate versus how the utility operates. Uh, first and fo foremost, the PSC rate design doesn't directly include debt payments and capital projects in the revenue requirements. So there's going to be a timing issue between when you're paying for stuff and when you're recovering that. So substation projects is a, is a great example, prime example. You pay $1.5 million for that now. You're getting off cheap, by the way, $1.5 million. $4 million. So pay up for right now, whether you finance it or it comes from cash um, internally, pay $1.5 million out the door, and you won't recover that for 40 years recover 140 of that every year. So big timing difference between when cash is coming in from customers versus when you're actually paying for it. Um, and after it goes into operation. Correct. Yep. Uh, so again, like I said, the, the biggest thing too also is, is the timing difference. So also in the rate of return, if we go back to the, the PSC's recovery, the PSC does not include in their rate design any debt payments, so that's your principal and interest payments, or capital projects. That is not included. So any money you pay out the door is not included in your rates. PSC justification for that is, is through depreciation and the rate of returns. The rate of return is meant to pay your debt payments and capital. And a lot of times, most of the times, most utilities, that rate of return is never sufficient to operate the utility um, the way it should be. So, 
Any questions with great design versus cash flow? That pretty understandable. And, and I'll, what I'm going to do when I when I show you the the results, I'm going to compare the two. How the how the actual um, actual 2020 results, the what you know, cash flow, what's been taken in versus how the PSU uh, design. So if there's no questions here, um, I'll start off just by showing. I'm going to apologize. It's very small. Um, I can provide this afterwards if necessary. <clears throat> no, it's not. So this is just exactly everything I just went through. This is your most recent rate order. Um, pull that up. But this is this is the net inve net investment rate based calculation. So I know these numbers are hard to see, but your net utility plant is about four point about four point five million, less your accumulated depreciation three point one. So your net book value of your plant is one point three million dollars. That tells me that's almost that's about Roughly 75%. That tells me is your. I don't have to go out and look at your system. That tells me your system is is old, aging. Uh, it's likely around. You know, a lot of things probably need to be replaced, which is why substation project is you know probably on the forefront. Or it hasn't been depreciated properly by book value. For what's been done. On, on the depreciation topic, yep. is it one fortieth, like over forty years? Is it one fortieth evenly every year, or is it yep. like a straight line? Yep. A straight line. Straight line. A, yep. Uh, and that's another comment I'll have on your, your new PSE rate case. Uh, you have the same depreciation rate for every single asset. I don't know if that's intentional from the PSE, but it's not common. I have not seen it before. Usually, uh, a computer would last three to seven years, whatever it is, uh, or a vehicle. A vehicle is a probably better example. Okay, they last seven to ten years versus a substation. They have different depreciation rates. So a vehicle is going to depreciate quicker because you don't get as much of a useful life out of it, whereas a substation you get 40 years out of it. By having different useful lives, that's, that determines your depreciation rate. By having a, the same depreciation rate for every asset, your depreciation trucks over 40 years. You know, you're depreciating subs over 20 years, but you're also depreciating computers over. Is that on numbers on our end or PSC end? That's on the PSC, and, and it could be because uh, the Black Earth is a small utility. I didn't go back to 09. I can go look at 09 to see if it was similar to, uh, if that was the same. Uh, I mean, it very well could be, uh, just for simplicity purposes. But I personally never seen it. And if, if I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so from this net inv net investment rate space, aging infrastructure, and this net inv the, this low number right here this is 1.3. So basically, your net book value 1.3 million dollars. That's an important figure because when they when they design their rates in your you recover cash off of rate of return, you're recovering 6% on that $1.3 million. Yeah, you have almost you know, 4.5 out there, but you can only recover costs on 1.3 of them. So that's a very misleading number. Um, so that 1.3 times your rate of return, uh, that's about, I think, $86,000 or, no, uh, yeah, $86, or so. And you're talking at 6.5 percent. Yep, and I'll, I'll have that number later. Um, what that basically means is that's what you can earn to pay debt service, capital projects, and any other cash flow. 86,000. So, and I'll show you those numbers. Um, I, mean, I just wanted to provide this data. Uh, it will come up later. Um, just give you a little context. And then the right. Um, my apologies, it's so small. That's the four different components. It's revenues, expenses, and your taxes, rate of return, um, and your depreciation. Now I'll, I'll succinctly show so that. The numbers on the right is what gets to the 4.5 million. No, this is what uh, develop. This is what um, this is on the right is what determines uh, the cost that you have to recover. So what do you have to charge customers to recover your costs okay. from the PSC's perspective? Yeah. Not from operating the utility, but from the PSC's yeah. design perspective. So it's hard to see here, but 
when they submitted when you submitted the rate study, based upon the numbers you submitted, you were earning about a 0.7% rate of return or a net operating income of about $9,500. And the new rates are to develop, uh, the new rates are to recover about 85,000. Remember that 85,000 is to recover your capital projects and your debt service. I'll, I'll expand upon that a little bit more. So again, so this, this is what's in the handout. So, Maybe you can read it now. <laughs> so the first page, what I've done on the on the very left side is any components of both the PSE uh, rate design and the cash flow. That's all going to be analyzed here. Um, on the left are the different components, and then on the right, I'll bring it up, um, is your actual results. So the first, uh, and the reason I went back to 2020, I couldn't go back a lot farther. Um, I just wanted to give you some context of the last couple of years, um, and then I'll make comments upon prior to 2020 after that. So uh, looking at your handout now, uh, the very first column I'm looking at is under 2020 under the cash basis. So the, the various components of cash basis of the utility, so how the utility actually operates. So for 2020, Took in 1.9 million uh, total operation maintenance expenses of 1.57, uh, 1 so 1.6. You can see the purchase power, so what's coming from Alliant is usually around 75%, 60 to 75% of your, your total cost. Then you have uh, debt service, principal and interest payments, 38,000, total capital maintenance costs, 310, and then Pilot, that's payment in lieu of taxes, that's what's paid to the city. So if you add that all together, that's $1.9 million. On the other side, uh, the utility basis, so this is the PSC rate design, if you look at their model. Revenues and expenses, the same, so nothing changes there. Uh, debt service, principal interest, not included in the PSC's calculation. Capital costs, not included in the PSC's calculation. Depreciation, utility finance only, is, and that's 143000 Payment in lieu of taxes is the same. And then the under the 143 for depreciation, this is a calculation of your net investment and rate base. So go down to J on the far left column, they're, they're lettered. So J is your rate of return, or no, excuse me, I want to go to I, total rate base. So your total rate base for 2020 was 1.1 million. You can earn, your former rate of return is 5.6%. So you can earn $64,000, $481 on your rate of return based upon your rate base. So compare that 64,000 to, on the left side, the cash basis, Principal and interest payments, capital, those two items. That's three hundred and well, it's two uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars versus what you're getting in rate of return of sixty thousand. Get an anomaly. So, all said and done, um, at the very bottom we have uh, the differences between the rate recovery difference is about one hundred forty one thousand dollars for twenty twenty two. I mean twenty twenty. Uh, underneath that, a few other operating statistics. Uh, operating income, uh, that's usually a figure that a lot of people look at for determining benchmarks, you know, how, how is the uh, utility operating. Uh, per the financial statements and per the PSC, you had positive operating, um, positive operating income in both, and rate of return of 10% 2020. So the reason I show this is because if you look at the next two lines, the very last two on the page, total cash flows, this is without any debt financing, and I put estimated cash balance at the end of the year. The reason I did that is because from all the financial information I had, financial statements, PSC report, internal documents, it's very hard to determine what is the actual negative cash. Because on the financial statements it shows zero. Or it shows an amount due, for, due to the municipal fund. So it's, it's Fairly hard to determine, but it's going to be close. So, by municipal fund, you mean general fund? Yes. Yep. 
So total cash flows for 2020, negative 144,000. Your estimated cash balance at the end of the year, negative 368,000. What that means is, from the PSE's perspective, you're killing it. 10% rate of return, that's awesome, that's great. Well, that doesn't mean anything if you're not generating any cash flow. What that means is, under the PSC's methodology, everything is happening how it should, how they design rates and above that. But if you look at it from a cash perspective, you're in the hole. Yeah. The PSC doesn't look at it that way. So that's kind of the difficult part about the, the PSC's, the way they design rates. They don't take two very big components of the utility to the biggest cost of the utility in the consideration. How did that ever happen? So, because I'm that basically they're not adequately accounting for operation and maintenance. Why? Well, uh, operation is operation and maintenance is covered. So, what this is saying, if you look at the operating income and the rate of return, since you since you have a positive rate of return, your O and M in your pilot is being adequately recovered. Because okay. what the calculation of rate of return takes into account revenues, less expenses, and your pilot and depreciation. So those are being adequately covered. It's the, the capital costs and the debt payments that are not being recovered. The PSC's mentality is those costs are recovered through depreciation over the life of the asset. Now, you can make some argument in that, that that's proper accounting, and it is for utility rate making purposes, but for cash flow operating the utility, it doesn't work. So, yeah, from the PSC's perspective, this is 2020, doing everything you should, so the rates are designed properly to recover from customers, to cover your costs. However, they're not, you're not gonna expand any facilities, you're not gonna be able to pay your debt. Those are two very big components. Um, so that's any questions on 2020. Um, so every year yeah. after this, I'm going to be basically doing the same thing. Just just so I understand yep. that's right. So items C and D, debt service, and total capital maintenance. Uh, we're going to have that every year regardless, but where we gain that back is through the depreciation over the years? Feasibly. If, and yeah, <laughs> that is, so you have the power to control your capital. Now, and that's one of my considerations I'll have later is, you know, options that you have. Uh, so first and foremost is reliability, of course. You want to make sure customers aren't getting shut off, number okay. one. So you got to do everything you can, capital maintenance, to keep the lights on, keep power going. So first and foremost, those are your priorities. If there's other projects that aren't necessarily critical, you don't need to do them, then you don't have to spend money. It, you may want to spend the money to upgrade the facilities for the future, but in the current financial position, it's not, it's not beneficial. It's not improving your financial position. So the, the two things you can control right now, uh, well, the biggest thing is what you can control right now is uh, your capital costs. You can't control o to an extent, but I'll, I'll go over that too. Um, so I'll fast forward now to 2021, exact same you know, exact same model, different results. I'll bring both of them up here. So, <coughs> cash utility basis, um, operating other revenues the same, uh, purchase power, uh, O&M, look at the same uh, for both methods. Um, on the cash basis, you'll see number C, or item C, uh, interest and other income deductions, uh, that's some miscellaneous revenues, and then there's also debt issuance costs. When you issued debt in 2021, that was 51 grand that went out the door. So that's a cash basis cost that is not recovered in your rates. Um, debt and principal payments, 52 grand. Uh, total capital maintenance costs, 406. Now, I want to caveat uh, some of this because you did issue debt in 2021, and you did use those debt proceeds pay for some of those capital costs. I didn't have that data, so I couldn't get that, those specifics. So I just want to caveat that. I'm just putting in what's going out the door cash-wise uh, for the utility uh, for 2020. So uh, 
guess I'll go down to the summary. So the the cash basis versus the utility basis, uh, the recovery difference, $282,000. So you had $282,000 cash go out the door that is not included in your rate, or that you're not recovering in that year. So next line down, operating income, financial statements was $51,000. Well, now the PSC, remember 2020, we're doing well. We're at 10% rate of return. We're making money. Look at next year. Now we're negative 25 in the hole with a negative 2% rate of return. Last two items on here, total cash flows, $173,000. Then estimated, I put estimated year in balance because uh, again, I didn't have the financial data, but accumulating it from the previous slide, uh, you're now at, the electric utility is now at $541,000 in the whole. Basically, the general fund from subsidizing it. So that's 2021. Uh, the next one, this is just preliminary data. I say pre-audited data because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of adjustments. Uh, you're going to see some yellow on here. Yellow is on here because I don't think these numbers are going to be final. Um, there could be O&M expenses that, that came in after Danny provided the information. So that's going to modify the numbers. So same analysis for 2022, pre-audit, pre-new rates. Uh, again, you're at 149, about 149.5 in the hole. Operating income, negative 85,000. Now you're at a rate of return of negative, almost. Total cash flows, estimated, of course. And again, capital, capital is paid by bond proceeds, so that's a little, that can be a little misleading. Uh, but still, your your total cash flows is negative, and the amount due to the general fund at the end of the year is $501,000. Okay, fast forward. Uh, next one this is 2023 budget. Um, again, it was kind of difficult to follow where a lot of the numbers were in the, in the budget, but holistically, I, I got a good picture of it. Um, this is with new rates, keep in mind. Um, so I did include the new rates in here. So if you look at the net recovery difference in the current year, we're only at $2,000. That's based upon budget. So just remember too that um, if you look in line J, the rate of return, that is now 6.5%. So if you look at your rate order, right now the current a benchmark for the PSC is 6%, but they gave you an additional 5 or 0.5% cash adder because the way that they look at things, your capital structure uh, rates weren't adequate to, for the, uh, the, the 6% wasn't adequate, so they gave you an extra half a percent. That equates to $6,500. It's not a heck of a lot. So based upon your current 2023 budget with your new rates, uh, your rate recovery is you know, doing better. You're also operating at a negative. You're still not operating at a loss. This is based upon budget. Cash flows is still negative and your estimated year-end cash balance is still negative around $670,000. So last one, um, this is the actual rate. So this is what this is what is in your current rate order. Um, the way the uh, the PSC designed the rates. So on the right side, the PSC utility basis. All these numbers were taken from their final order. So this is actual published data from the PSC. Uh, so the the very last line, uh, item K, the return on rate base. For eighty-five thousand dollars, that's when they when you increased rates, increase got you eighty-five thousand. But if you look based upon a rate recovery uh, on the cash basis, took out all capital costs. So that's a pretty big number that we took out of there. Even taking all the capital out of there with the debt payment of two hundred fifty thousand, you're still negative cash flow based upon your new rates. 
So you're already in the hole even with your rates. Total cash flows, yeah, it's not it's not six six figures anymore. Now you're at five figures, you know, low five figures, which is good. But then by the end of 23, you're still significant negative cash. I do want to caveat uh, one thing though. So with the PSC rates, um, I know Vanguard is, is a big part of this. They have a certain amount that you have to pay every year. Without capital projects. Right. So regardless of, you still have to pay them X amount. Yep. Right? Regardless? Yep. That's yeah, still right. cash out the door. So whether you don't do capital projects, you're still paying them to do something. Mm -hmm. So that's still cash out the door. So by not doing capital, you're not really saving much because you still have those operating costs. Those, and I'll get some more details about that later, um, I think there's some of those costs that aren't included in your rate. So that's just a, a brief overlook, uh, view of you know, kind of recent and current cash versus PSC. Anybody have any questions? I know there's going to be a lot. I do have a, a few more slides here to go over just to give you a little bit more context and then we can. I, I will add, going through all this, there, there's a lot of options to get out of it, and there's some to take hard work and forward looking. That's all. There's, you're not, everything's fixed. Yep. So, did we, did we get to the states because we haven't increased anything over the years? No. Well, this is no. where I'm going to go right now. Okay. Is how we got here. <laughs> okay, all right. That's my next question. No, I want to. <laughs> Just to provide context because <laughs> you think about finances like utilities are like a normal business where general government is different. The accounting is completely different for a government than it is for a utility. And I wanted to give you context because the way the utility operates cash wise day to day is not how customers are charging retail rates. There's a big difference between the two. So I want to point that out because some of this you can't help. Some of the, the PSC determines what the retail rates are. So they say what your rates are and they say what you can recover. So some of this is beyond your control. Some of this is based upon the model. So how do we get here? Let's go over a couple of a quick basic things. Um, of course, I apologize for this being so small again. So what this is, this is a summary of, of some, some key cash balances over the years. 2006, you had the electric utility, specifically electric utility, had $852,000 in cash, operating cash. And clear. 2008, you had almost $1.1 million in operating cash. That's pretty darn good for utility, for electric utility. That's, that's generally where you see well finance or well-operated electric utilities has some cash. So now you have a million bucks in the bank. Now you go to a substation. You don't have to borrow and pay interest costs on that. Now you can use your internal funds to do that substation and save money on interest over the life. So uh, 2011, and then again, I'm just picking these at random. Um, so basically after 2008, it started going down. 2011, cut in half. 2013, you're now negative 200 grand. 2016, you're negative 755 grand. 2008, I think we, uh, it was like 386. And then the most recent data I had was May of 22. You're at about $765,000 in the hole for the electric utility. See a little trend here? About in uh, 2011, 2012, cash started to dwindle significantly. That's it. And but that's I'll, I'll also talk. when they was paying part of the sewer. They were borrowing money from sewer to pay electric, or yep. electric yep. to pay. I did look at that. Yep. Okay, I got that. So also on that, those, those uh, some other key comments here. Uh, negative net income and rate of return consists consistently since 2008, with a, a few exceptions. So what that basically means is however your rates were designed in the past weren't enough to cover your operations, and that accumulates over time. 2005-2011, uh, you did have positive cash flow from operations, uh, and then starting in 2012, you had negative 
500,000 in um, cash flow from the operations. And then since then, without any debt issuances, you're negative cash flow annually. So I know there was a, an occurrence that happened in 2012, 2013, and when I'm looking at the data, it's, it sticks out pretty apparent. Um, roughly $400,000, $450,000 was lost. I don't know what that figure was, but that has never been recovered. PSC has never put that in your rates. So where we are now, as far as for, we saw 2020 through uh, 23, if, even if you look here at 28, 400 grand is what you're in the hole. It just happens to be right around that same amount that lost. Never recovered, and to recover it. So really, a big reason why you're in this hole is because of that event. Never recovered before. Um, the embezzlement. What we're talking about is the embezzlement. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Put it on the table. That's what it was. But did yeah. the borrowed money all get paid back? Uh, eventually, yes. Where has been paid off? And that's why. So that's why you see from uh, 2018 to 22, why that went so much higher. Yes, it was removed from the balance sheet, but it was just moved from a due from you know due to sewer utility to your negative cash. They just moved it. Yeah. So really, technically, it hasn't been, I don't know if it hasn't paid. Above and beyond that, though, there was, it looks like there was some mismanagement of funds and projects and stuff, too, because they, they wasted a lot of money in about a three-year period. Well, I got that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. In 2013, $9,000 was paid Went back, back to school. school for the error. I didn't know if that was yeah, part of this or not. That's part of it. Or that's part of the cash flow, right? Oh, see, that I didn't see that anymore. Yeah. That's the problem with financial statements, is they don't explicitly tell you that. Yeah. I can just pull data from three different sources, and I can see it. That was a bad it. I mean, but that wasn't, it was 200, right? There was two payments, two payments to the school, wasn't it? Yeah. Two. But I guess it's all. No, that's good, though. Yeah. That contributes yeah. to it. So, so really, there you go. Those two items, the embezzlement and that big payment, look where you are now. There is your seven hundred thousand dollars. So this is, if you look at it historically, it's not necessarily mismanagement of anything. I mean, utility has to do capital projects, but you have to have context of money you have, money you have coming in, versus where your balances are. And it just so happens, unfortunately, two hundred grand went out the door and you never got it back. Now that the city is, you know subsidizing the electric utility because of it. So that, that's the next bullet point I have, I have on here. Higher than normal operating expenses in, in 2012 to 2015. That was largely because of um, the embezzlement. There was a couple other things where the expenses shot up. I don't know. I don't have the accounting records, so I can't tell why, but... They did a bunch of projects. When you say that, is that, <laughs> that Vanguard to operate in maintenance? Yeah. I mean, is that, that our... Is that our Yearly. So, so that I, so we have to delineate here between capital and operating again. Um, as far as the operating expenses go, I don't have that specific data, so I can't tell but you that. Combined, it's projects being done. And that's uh, so. And I, I think I have that in here too. Uh, steadily Jeff, increasing purchase <clears throat> work costs. So, Jeff, with that operating and maintenance expense being high those few years, is that also contributed because there was no capital expense to come off of there? Sure, well, it could be. Yep. Because that should come off of your operating income, correct? Yep. So if 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 that was capitalized properly, because we didn't capitalize for some reason for three years, that would have come off that expense and it wouldn't have looked quite so bad. Yep. And that's that's another comment I'll have here is is anomalies and inconsistencies in accounting data. Um, I'll touch on that too. Yep. But that is another component of this. Uh, another bullet point here: steadily increasing purchase power costs annually. So the utility has what's called a TCAC um, adjustment clause. That's the power cost adjustment clause. What that is, uh, when your power provider uh, right now is a, is a perfect is a perfect uh, context for it. When 
your utility bills are going up. Big part of that is because of market energy prices. So buying market or buying energy on the market from IOUs and power providers is up significantly. Many reasons. There's uh, supply chain. There's labor. There is um, <clears throat> job. You know. There's a whole the whole thing. You, everything you hear about the economy that affects industry too. Um, also, uh, catastrophic events, hurricanes, stuff like that. That puts strains on gas markets, gas supply. Um, they can't hire enough people to drive trains to get coal to the, the power facilities. So something happens out west, that can have an effect on the Midwest because all the grid is interconnected. If there's a shortage in one supply in one area, that's going to trickle down and affect any everybody. So there's a lot of different factors that go in, but the end result is the power providers, so Alliant, has higher costs for their fuel, whether it's coal, whether it's natural gas. They have higher cost operation. And that goes into cost delivering the customer. Theirs is higher. They pass it on to Vanguard, or excuse me, to the village. Village then through the PCAC then passes that to the customer. So when we see our rates go up as a, as a retail customer, a big part of that, especially recently, is that power, that PCAC charge. And that is just the utility, and this is the PSE requirement, taking that additional charge that's provided from Alliance to uh, the village passed directly to the customers. Other people don't also understand that your PCAC charge comes down when your rate goes. Yep. When your rate case goes through. You're just charging it a different way. So you go up three percent. Your your PCAC yep. is coming down. There can be times when yeah. costs when costs were lower and that would lower your bill. Right. Just so happens the last year or so it's been higher, a lot mm -hmm. largely because of the economy. Now and this is one thing for Danny. Um, when you do your purchase power costs, the U factor changed in that calculation. That's a, I'm not going to begin to try and describe it because it's a complicated calculation. But the U factor was increased. So what that means is you can provide a little bit more in the PCA. So you'll have to update it and how you do your calculations. So um, purchase power costs, also a percentage of your total cost for the village, have been going up. So purchase power is, is more and more a higher cost of the utility. Um, and that's steadily increasing. Uh, let's see, I, I do have capital replacement program. I have ramped up in 2016, yeah. On the purchase power cost, does any of that have increase have to do with people getting more efficient with their, like the cost to operate yeah. the utility is the same. Solar. People use less power. Mm -hmm. so. I assume some factor of that. The difficult part about utility rate making is what people take for granted a lot is how much it actually costs for you to turn on the lights. If you looked at what a power plant costs, a coal power plant is $5 billion, $7 billion right now to the transmission lines that get it to the distribution system, to the distribution system that gets it to your meter. All that infrastructure is extremely expensive. And just like your costs, those costs are recovered over 40 years, over 30 years, depending on the infrastructure. So as a retail customer, we're paying for, we'll, we'll say, a coal plant in Minnesota. We're paying for that over 50 years. Well, and then we're doing that in our retail rate, you know, 150th every year. So People that are generating and providing and distributing the power, they recover those costs over a longer period of time than when they're actually paying cash for that. In the short term, when costs are rising, a lot of times those costs aren't being recovered in real time. They're recovered in a rate case subsequent to when they're experienced. And that creates issues for utilities all across the board. So, I always take a step back. I'm, I deal with this every day, so even on the water side, wastewater side, 
take for granted on flipping the switch. I don't know how much that actually costs from taking it out of the ground to generating the power to distributing the power. That's extremely expensive. So just I always want to put that in the context. Yeah, rates are high. Well, yeah, it's high for a lot of people. Um, yeah, the other thing is with the PCAC cost, you can you can get back the money from the increased cost of the generation and what you're being billed, but it doesn't help your demand churn. Right. You still could lose on that PCAC churn. Yeah, and I, I won't go off on a tangent on this, yeah. but <clears throat> so I, I've worked in public power my whole life, uh, and there's a lot of benefits to public power. The reason I say that is you actually look at this rate design, so Village of Black Earth versus Alliant Energy, Madison Gas and Electric. So IOUs are allowed a rate of return double that of the municipality. So for instance, you're at 6%, the IOUs get 12%. Obviously, much bigger utilities, they have generate, they have a lot more cost to recover. You want all that where this is just a distribution uh, facility. A lot that goes into it, but I like to put this as context. So you have an investor-owned utility that earns 12% rate of return, you get 6%, and you get a so municipal owned utility, 6%, that's bare minimum for the utility to survive, to operate. When the PSC is designing rates at 12% for an investor owned utility, investor owned utilities have to make their stockholders happy. They have to pay earnings per share. They have to pay stock, you know, anything that deals with stock. So indirectly, the PSC, by a higher rate of return, is making Wall Street making IOUs better. Just to put in the context, I mean, there's a lot that goes into operating a, a larger utility like that, but I always like to keep that in mind that it's a different capital structure. Cost of capital IOUs might be a lot higher than it is for municipal. But the PSC allows a 12% return versus a 6%. And just because I've worked, right now I work with an electric utility, I would love 12% rate of return. I mean, it won't be good for our customers, but for utility operations, we won't be in financial positions that we are without uh, with a lower return. So I, I would like to caveat that because it's a lot of things that people don't know. The PSC indirectly is a higher rate of return. So more money for the for the IOUs, which in turn they can give to investors. I looked at rates of it, you know, with the line. Ours are really in line. They're not. They're not more than other places. So. so I can I can tell you. So I live in La Pond, or excuse me, I work in La Pond, I live in Sun Prairie, both public power communities, and we WCCR public power, our wholesale provider, always provide us the comparison of our community rates. Again, our rates are here. compared to Alliant, compared to. Um, as the gas and electric, all the IOUs in the area, even the cooperative. And for retail, commercial, uh, well, general service, industrial gets a little bit different. Uh, typically, the municipal is, is cheaper. Tell you from Pond's perspective, it's 26% cheaper for a retail customer to buy from a public owned versus a line energy. And that's, those are strict, cold, hard data. IOUs increase the rates every year. Every year. Pawn, we haven't raised them since 2016. I like to tell people, okay, we haven't raised our rates since 2016. Imagine buying a 2022 truck with 2016 salary. But it's still your PC. Correct. So, a little tangent, but back to the, so, your capital replacement did start to ramp up in 2016. Um, that's just an observation. Um, there's no, it's no good, bad, positive, negative. It's just an observation. Um, obviously, reliability is key. So, if you need reliability, you need to replace stuff. Then, by all means, uh, then that should be done. So, 2021. Um, so we ish. So the village issued 250 grand of annual uh, debt payments 
with historical negative cash flows and negative income coupled with a negative cash balance. So historically speaking, without the obviously the, the big cash items, you were still operating for the most part negatively. Then we issued 250k in debt. Uh, that's going to just exacerbate the direction. I just want to point that out because it's going to provide insight into where the utility is headed with that current debt outstanding. So you did have, um, so I think there was some refunding there, a 23 grand, and by refinancing some of the old debt, um, but you also paid 51 grand in down issuance costs. Kind of offset each other. Um, and then the last bullet point here, the, I've been kind of talking about this already, anomalies and inconsistencies in CSA reporting versus financial reporting, specifically capital assets, expenses, and cash balances. So Mitch and I were talking before the meeting, this is largely likely the result of having different financial people look at your records, whether it's your auditors um, or other external parties that classify things differently or maybe don't have as much experience in the utility landscape, that there's a lot of anomalies and inconsistencies. So, almost done. Other financial observations, um, big part of your operational cost is the increase in power cost. Um, this year, uh, the difference May, or the net difference between what you're taking in in revenues and your power costs may decrease with the new U factor with the PCAC calculation, so that's going to help. Um, but without having the data of the actual PCA calculation, uh, PCAC calculation, I, that I do not know. Hopefully, it's going to help um, cope with revenues a little bit. That instead of uh, that PCAC where you're passing through the customers, you're now taking some of that on. The whole purpose of the PCA was to pass it to the customer. Um, so hopefully that. Um, so other uh, lowering capital costs uh, may not result in cash flow savings uh, as it may shift costs between capital expense. Um, and I, I do have a caveat here. Some of these costs, expenses may not be recovered in rates. I'll touch on that briefly. That's right here. So a couple observations between the data that was submitted in the rate study and your actual budget. So at least as far as I could identify, sorry, it's so small. <laughs> costs, I have costs presumably not included in your current rate design versus your 23 budget. Uh, $216,000 of purchase power costs. So if you look at the actual rate case, that what they include is your O&M costs for purchase power was $216,000 lower than your 23 budget. Pretty significant. So if you do spend $1.5 million, which your capital budget is, the rates are designed to cover about $1.5 or something like that. Um, also, um, there's some O&M, about almost two hundred dollars that was not included in the rate case that is in your budget. Now, where that comes from, I know because the, the data between the rate study and your budget and past data is, is <coughs> if I looked in the accounting records, I could probably figure it out, but there's a, there's a difference. Uh, next line down, rate study, um, total O&M and capital, what was submitted for rate recovery was $565,000. What's in your actual budget is 663000 That's all um, O&M, zero capital. So there's a $100,000 difference between what's in your budget versus what's being covered in rates. Uh, last item here, expenses reported in rate study, they're lower than actual uh, budget costs, so there's no rate covered. So that's just a summary. Now, there could be, re there could be uh, reasonable reasons for that. Um, whatever you use for budgeting versus what was put in the rate study, stuff could have changed, you know, with substation and all that. Um, but I just want to point it out that you may not 
even though you did just do a rate case, you're not fully recovering the actual costs that you're incurring. All right, so where do we go from here? Oh, there we go. I don't need PSC rates. So the current rates, yeah, they will not cover 23 budget costs or improvement at your cash position. All right, so where to go? What can we do? A lot of things you can do. First and foremost, you can lower capital operating expenses, resulting in uh, cash, uh, lowering cash outflows. Um, always want to caveat that, that if you do choose lower capital, lower O&M, whatever that looks like, you don't want to disrupt reliability or critical infrastructure. That's always first and foremost, but for lack of a better term, bare minimum is one way you can help your cash flows. Another one, this is going to be unpopular, typically for municipal governments, freeze or lower pilot payment due to general fund. Um, like I mentioned before, the payment rule of taxes uh, in your rate case that was $71,000. <coughs> you are the largest, the left utility is the largest taxpayer of the city, typically, without knowing your tax base. Um, that this is a, uh, with Wisconsin State Statute calculation. Municipal governments always have the ability to modify it. You can't go above what the calculation is and take more from electric, but you can freeze it or lower it. Tell you on uh, with our water utility, we have a pretty advanced uh, reverse osmosis water plant that was very expensive. Um, and so the city did a resolution to freeze the pilot payments of the water utility because the debt payments were so high and they didn't want to raise rates anymore on water customers, so they, they froze it. Now, you have the ability to do that. If it frees up cash flow, then that's going to hurt inflows for the general fund. Is it general fund subsidizing it anyways? I mean, yeah. Right? Rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, exactly. Essentially well, what it would it though, it'd be in better condition faster. Well, what, what you would do, so if you do freeze it, lower it, just example. So in the rate case, in your actual rates, I think it's 71,423. Say you lower it to 50. Well, that's 25 grand in cash not going out of the, not going out of the electric utility that the city's gonna pay for anyway. It's just an option. Um, that may change depending on how your mill rates change or your assessment ratio. Uh, depends on all that change, your, your pilot payment is going to change accordingly. But it's, it's, it's an option. A lot of, a lot of times for, for city taxpayers, it's not a popular one just because um, now you're having deficiencies in the general fund. But if your general fund's healthy, you have the ability to do it. Reduce debt payments, uh, debt or debt payments where eligible. So all of these considerations are aimed at reducing cash out the door. End of the day, cash out the door. The operating results are what they are. There's not much you can do about revenues. Um, you can lower expenses, but there's not much you can do about the way that the PSC is designing the rates. What you can do is manage cash out the door. This also might not be a popular one. Forgive or reduce negative cash balance due to the general fund. Um, that's, that's really just, uh, that would more or less mean is you know, the, the city and the taxpayers are um, funding the embezzlement and um, other businesses that aren't paying their bills. Correct. Yep. Typically, it's the other way around where the electric utility is subsidizing the government, but based upon the general fund balances, it looks like the village is in pretty good position versus the electric utility. That's, a, that's the good news. Which we're is a financially good position. I can, I can tell you we're in a lot of communities. Uh, that's not the status of most municipal governments right now. Right now, state shared payments are flat, but costs are going up. So you're either cutting cutting services, cutting staff, or you're cutting something because only, you only have a certain amount of money coming in. And you can't grow that because of how fast your community is growing. So if you're in a good financial position, that's great. Hopefully there's more money coming from governments, you know, from the feds, but that's bureaucracy, you don't want to get involved. Yeah. 
Okay. <coughs> or, lastly, do nothing. We'll do nothing. You continue to operate at a loss. Current negative balances will be con continually subsidized by the general fund. And then uh, the PSC is requiring you to file a new rate case in 24, every 20 years. Okay. Tell you, working with Madison Water Utility, um, when I was there, the very first thing I did is I wrote a 110 page financial improvement plan to the PSC. Because they were in a similar situation and they needed um, improvement, and the PSC said you have to do a rate case every two years. Now, IOUs do a new, they do a rate case every two years, but they do new rates every year. When they do a, when the IOU is going for a rate case, it'll be every two years, but the PSC will give them a step increase. So what they will say is, okay, we're looking at your rates this year, okay, this year you get X percent, next year you get that percent, and then you come up for a new one. So IOU is just a, so what they do, 8% and then? I can tell you in Wupon, hour for hours, Again, I don't live in Wapan, but work in Wapan, our cost in two years from Alliance, because um, we share territory with them. We get our energy from WPPI, but we also have part of the communities from Alliance. Our cost went up 21% in two years from Alliance. I so that's, 16 to that's not all that in common. Uh, Alliance doing that, and they're just passing on their costs. So it's happening everywhere. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's not a heck of a lot you can do about it. No. So, okay, I'm done. Um, Questions, comments, clarification. The uh, I, I didn't want to rush through this tonight. That's why they, there's no time limits or anything. Or mm -hmm. uh, I, I want everybody to feel comfortable with decisions. Um, obviously, Brian from Ellers is here for the next part of it to say, hey. What can we do? What can we change on the borrowing side of it? Mm -hmm. And there are some options. Um, and to make the utilities more healthy and start to generate a positive so we can go on from here. Um, it's, it's not, it looks, they look like big numbers and they are big numbers, but there is, there is a path. Yeah. You can, by managing certain items, certain cash outflows, you can get out of this hole in X amount of years, five, eight years. Uh, it's doable. And without anything catastrophic happening to your infrastructure, uh, but it, it's definitely definitely attainable. It's yeah. just going to have to take some, some good reporting um, and then and costs. And then I'm going to probably later ask the board for money to have an independent review every year for the next few years. <laughs> um, on the way the PSC determines or allows determine the operating and other revenues, do they factor in like, the rules and laws that are in place that prevent? Do they assume there are just going to be some people that just end up not paying their bill, you know, using fifty thousand dollars worth of electricity and yeah. saying, "Sorry, can't so like pay it." Uncollectible yeah. account. Is yeah. there a deadbeat percentage that they well, use? Well, you do have um, no tax payers. Uh, you do have tax roll options. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that is unique to Wisconsin. So most utilities around the country, whether you're IOU or municipal, have a reserve for uncollectible accounts. So one percent of your accounts or whatever that you just write off. So write off meaning provided the service, we know we're never gonna get paid, either provided to a collections and get one tenth of the bill and just write it off, be done with it. Where Wisconsin allows utilities every October, November to place those delinquent utility bills on the tax roll. So this year is over $48,000. So that is something very unique and that's beneficial to the utility because if you spend PSE, there's positive and negatives about it. This is one positive thing is or if your utility is positive, maybe the customer, maybe not. But it allows you, instead of writing that off at $50,000, well, now you're shifting it to the, eventually the county to collect. And put it on their tax roll, and if they don't, well, now they're delinquent on their tax. 
that's even more of a financial <coughs> consequence on the individual. But the utility has more likelihood to make whole on that 50 grand uh, because of that PSE regulation. You just said there's 48,000 of uncollected electric. That was rolled to taxes. Rolled. Yeah. So, so you will get paid for it. Yeah. So as a taxpayer, do I can I know who the who that forty eight thousand is? Can we publicly shame those people? I mean, <laughs> seriously, I mean seriously, I'm seriously. Well, you know, yeah. here's, here's the yeah, exactly. here's the bad that. part of it, though. You, you know, the problem with that yeah. is sometimes it's not the person would get publicly shamed who owed the money. The it landlord. might be who they rented from. The landlord mm -hmm. gets stuck yeah. right. Yeah. But at the same time, at the end of the day, if you're making the yeah. whole. It's coming from cost. Yep. Right. I mean, I, I think as as a taxpayer here, if I'm paying for some, I pay to keep my lights on. If somebody else isn't paying to keep their lights on, I want to know who that is so I can put pressure on them. But well, either put pressure on them to pay their bill or find out why they're not paying their bill to offer assistance, right? To say, why aren't you paying your bill? Is it just because you don't want to pay your bill? Well, that's not being a good neighbor, right? Like that that isn't that's not how communities work. We shouldn't have to pay for somebody just because they don't want to do it. But if it's an elderly person that can't, you know, is on a fixed income and rates get increased, well then we could come together as a community maybe and find something else out instead of raising our taxes. And then move well, it's not raise our so taxes, it goes on their taxes. Not yeah. their on their yeah. taxes. Yeah. Yeah. On, on their property property taxes. everybody. No, property 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 property. Property. Okay. It's oh, well, that's zero. a different story. No, no, no. no. Well, it's not a shared cost. It's not a shared cost. Okay. okay. Zero effect on the. On no, well, then that's, that's a different story. Okay. Yeah. And, and the the PSC and Public Center Energy, whatever your public benefits program is, does offer a lot of assistance. It's okay. It's yes. Wisconsin does that very well. Yeah. I will admit that is they do offer assistance from various different sources. Yeah. That's you know that's something that not a lot of states have, or Wisconsin requires it. Yeah. So focus on energy program if you participate in that. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, it does require what is in your rates. It's sixteen dollars of every customer's annual bill. Goes towards public benefits. So, so public benefits. What that? It's the dollar thirty three charge on every Yep. Bill. Yep. So that that equates to about sixteen dollars every year from every customer. But that money goes it goes into a public benefits program. Public benefits is a very very broad. That can be energy efficiency. It can be low income assistance, weatherization. Basically anything that's going to benefit the community or individuals. That's what that money goes. And it's, I used to audit the folks on the program, and it works very, very well. Not a lot of other states have that. So it's very important. I'd like to thank you for the very detailed mm -hmm. report. I love doing this. I hope, mm -hmm. I hope everybody understands. That was the reason it took so long and to um, do it right. Mm -hmm. and And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, our next step is, you know, we've, we've already purchased a transformer, yeah. all right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of the money that we borrowed. Um, Sean obviously is online, and, and we've talked, and it feels very confident for now that the transformer is a good backup. So I think we need to look at ways to take some of the funding off the electric utility mm -hmm. and help it get back on track faster and then reapproach the substation at another day. And how do we address his comment about the inconsistencies in the reporting? Like from the audit, you know, different audits. I mean, where do we come um, on <coughs> So part of our talking um, with Jeff was um, they, they use some things like My Excel that can transfer directly from Lydia's program to ours okay. and back and forth. And Trying to help get that online, and, and okay. he's he's really good at it. So, All right. um, That'd be good. Yeah. so what's amazing about so with your current financial software, there are tools above and beyond other utility softwares where in Excel you design reports mm -hmm. and you do all these fancy calculations and all the stuff I showed you. You can set up templates where you change a date and all that. Auto data automatically changes. You don't okay. have to touch a thing. 
You touch it, you have every sort of piece of information and that you want. And it's consistent then too, because yep. it's not the manual. Yep. And rate of error. So that's right, but what goes into the accounts that doesn't help that. Okay. It'll just what I mean by go into accounts. So I'll give you an example when I say inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. So depending upon who's doing the data or who's reviewing the data, um, if they don't have a lot of utility experience or they're focused on the general fund or more or less the electric two is kind of an afterthought as mm -hmm. part of an audit, a review, whatever, they're going to say this is money out the door and they pay for infrastructure. I don't care if it's operation or maintenance, not taking into consideration mm -hmm. that that's a big deal because yeah. it can snowball too. Yeah. <laughs> if you put, say you pay $200,000 for a new whatever, mm -hmm. uh, say a new transformer, you put that in expense, bucket truck. the bucket truck, that's a great one. You put the bucket truck in expense, that doesn't go into your capital, into your rate base. So you're not earning a rate of return on that. That goes into your expense. The PSC will see that in the next rate case and show it, see it as an anomaly, and they won't allow you to cover it. So, mm -hmm. by improperly accounting for it, you might likely won't be recovering it properly in your rate. So the PSC is not going to see that. They're mm -hmm. not going to go that great anyway. Yeah. So, in 2000, I believe it was 16, Lydia? <clears throat> when was that again? 16, I think. Um, there was an independent person that came in and, and helped with some of that stuff. It doesn't seem like the stuff on the village end got followed through it. And so that's kind of why I'd like to have an independent yeah. review every year, yeah. just for the board. So and Zach did reclassify a lot. Yes, he did. Um, yeah. I don't know if the PSC report was updated to yeah. reflect that. That's what we need. Yeah. So our, our financial outlook, if we can if we can get some of the debt off the electric utility, yeah. And we can do a, um, what do they call it, where you put it into service, your transformer? Oh, capitalized? Oh, no, but to the PSC, so you can count it. Um, Based on your rate base? Uh, it would be more or less instead of, um, say, you buy a bucket uh, truck. CA, construction authorization yeah. for the. Uh, the only time you need construction authorization is for, like, a large project like substation. Oh, oh they would need like, a portable transformer and put it in service. That you can. That way, the PSC yeah. will allow Certainly. it as equipment. <laughs> probably, they would probably want to know that. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, they won't take it into consideration for the next. So, yeah. So we want to make sure that gets considered in the next rate case, which won't be till 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last thing you want to do is spend $400,000 on something and not be able to recover. Recover yeah. costs. Because now you're. Yeah. <laughs> they heard yeah. it's exacerbating the problem. I think it is worth going back and correcting what's not been reported correctly on the annual reports and expense. I'm always for it. I like accurate information. Um, it's not going to change anything financially. It wouldn't, and I don't know how the PSC would address that. If they would add that in future rate cases, put it in your rate base, it would yeah. be advantageous to do so, yeah. but they may. Um, because it was there was some corrections on the PSC report, yeah, but that was not included. I, I think one thing that would be valuable, and obviously take a lot of work on your guys' end, Lydia, and working with Danny, but to go through and look at the capital projects in the last so many years, make sure they've been recorded properly, so we can get our 40th percent back every year. Because I, I'm not sure that that's not a place we can gain. I think we can gain there. I really yeah. do. I think that would be worth Because it's not like we haven't done capital improvements. We sh it shouldn't be fully depreciated. Exactly. So, don't you agree, Sean? Yep, I agree. So I, just like a, there was one year we did $900,000 in, in one M expenses and zero capital. Well, that, it doesn't make sense. It, it just doesn't. Yeah. No, it's so, not. Something wasn't translating, and it's, yeah. it's, it's something that's easily fixable. It's just going to take some digging. Yeah. I think just going forward, it'd be good to have that kind yeah. of. Yeah. And it, it's it's more of whoever's looking at the data if they know what they're looking at. Because if, if people are just paying stuff to pay it, you know, put it wherever, and then the auditors will fix it. Yeah. Well, if the auditors come in, their job isn't to fix your records. Their job is to make sure your financial statements are materially correct. Yeah. That's a very uh, loose term. 
because material can mean different things to different people with different calculations. Yeah. So a lot of times, if you have general fund auditors, compared to the general fund, the electric might be smaller, and they're just not going to look at it as closely as they might the general fund. See, I, I was specifically a utility auditor, so I cared about that stuff. I looked at things granularly. I looked at capital, yeah. where they might not look at capital. So how do we get better at recording that stuff? Yeah, who's it's teaching this stuff? Well, <laughs> first, I, I think we have to do the research on the capital yeah. projects in the last 10 years. Going back. And, and try to figure out what they are and the value of those projects. And then Whatever. Uh, if Jeff helps us set up the continuity yeah. between the transfers and then does a review for us every year. Well, what you can do, too, is um, in the MyExcel works, too. Great for it. Look at your largest expense. Um, Purchase power? Large, no, not purchase power, because that will never be capitalized. Okay. Look at your largest like maintenance expenses. Okay. Run all the detail, find the larger, bigger invoices, and just look at the invoices. Is this capital? And you guys are probably know the best. Is this capital or is it operating? Is what Vanguard is doing being translated to proper O and M capital? Yeah. That, so that, that's where I think that's where I think our error is coming from. I mean, we're giving we're presenting the info correctly. I just don't think it's getting entered correctly. That's why it goes into the same automatically. Yep. And it's so not a training thing. issue, or is that like it's you know like the training retraining issue? Garbage in, garbage I, out I, kind of a situation. I think it's a little of everything. I, yeah. I think it's lack of knowledge to do it right. Mm -hmm. Um, not asking for help when you should, and just not knowing. I would say, yeah, lack of experience. Yeah. And it's not a you know, bad thing. It's not a good or bad thing. It's just, I tell you, doing this for my first five years, I don't know what the hell it's doing. Yeah. Yeah. And after I experience it for now 15, 17 years, yeah, now I get it. It makes sense. But if you're doing this as part of your job, yeah. in addition to everything else you do, that's probably going to become an afterthought. And that's, that's, you know, it's not blaming anybody. It just mm -hmm. it happens, and all you can do is educate. And then, you know, next year you can come back and say, why didn't you do this? <laughs> well, and that's what I'm wondering. You know, like, do, you know, do we need to spend some money yeah. to get training? Yeah, do we I, need to spend some money to get a person in here to yeah. handle that? You know, like, well, I think you guys do it properly, right? You guys I think don't. the numbers that they're yeah, presenting, we, Vanguard's I would doing a good job. Yeah. But, it, but when it gets to us, so from the village, then, you know, Danny's got a lot on her plate. Do we need to get another person in here to handle that? Oh, we we need another, yeah, we might. Are those yeah. options? I, that's an option, absolutely. Okay. Because even if you spend the money to do it right, it's going to pay off. Right. Well, yeah. I'd rather absolutely. spend some money now than have to worry about every what year 10 years losing $100,000. And that's why we got to look at it every single year. Yeah. yeah. But if most of the data is coming from them, yep. they would know that. Yep. If you know, they know how to do it properly, then translate. Yeah. Yep. Right. I have one other question on the PCA. Um, did you recognize or notice any red flags as far as were those numbers right? Because there was even one, I think it was last year when purchase power went up a lot and revenues did not go up nearly what they I would have expected and I thought, mm, that's a direct cash item that I'm not sure is correct. That is a big question mark. The reason I say that is uh, that calculation, the PCAC calculation, can be quite difficult. A lot that goes into it, and you have to get proper reports from your system, apply proper numbers from your energy bill, and if that's not done consistently or rate changes or something changes, a formula changes, that can get off. And I've worked with utilities that have had to pay million dollars back to customers because they're people. So that was going to be another one of my suggestions is that yeah. some point, number one, understand the PCAC. Well, and you guys do a little bit better. We're probably, we're probably not going to understand it, but at least look at the inputs and see if we're calculating it reasonably yep. or accurately, and then go back and look at has it been reported properly. Because based upon the fluctuations in the data, what you're saying is inconsistent. Yeah. That that PCAC charge should be should follow um, the fuel and um, cost on airline. That's definitely an area to look at. 
Is that our, the village here? Or oh, how did you catch that? I just looked back at so that be our, data. And well, we, we do it every month. Yeah, so I'm saying that when, isn't it weird that well, Vanguard would catch that? Because they're looking for it. But you're things, looking are, for it. things are not good. So if you, he okay, so they're good right. that you caught I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just, it may not be done wrong with it. We don't know. It's it's be and like I said, it's, it's such a calculated area. It's such a complicated calculation. Hmm. And the software that you use currently provides reports that has been wrong in the past. It's, 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 it's my, it's my company that they work for. It. It works and great. Brian Hood from Alliance stopped in and went not to with properly. Really to make sure it was being done right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've done a lot good. of stuff already. Very good. But it's not set properly. Just to make sure. I've been in the utilities that it's not set up properly. So there was a timing difference between when the bill was paid versus when it was applied. Yeah. And depending on what report you get from Civic and how the report is set up, there might be some timing differences there that's leading to your issue. So we've, okay. we've already talked about, you know, if we need to get Civics in here to do mm -hmm. special things or training and stuff, we can do that too. And Civic would, yes. Get a hold. Yep. That's true, right? All right. So the next question is, what do we do? Ryan. Oh. Sure. I <clears throat> do mind going back to your last slide. I think I got a few comments yeah. that are not directly related to debt. Um, so yeah, the no, the recommendations are moving forward. Whatever it's called, next one. Yeah, and just keep all those bullets up. Ah, sorry. Oh, there. So, a couple of things too. Um, I'm your municipal advisor. So we generally, with the village, work on the annual reports, and then anytime you want to issue debt. Um, outside of that, it's kind of if you don't call us, you know, we're not <laughs> looking at your audits. We're not your auditors, so just understand that. Yeah. Um, and then, kind of on the general fund, as Danny uh, realized this year, we kind of help with that setting the levy and understanding levy limits and expenditure strength. So our involvement specifically with Black Earth is limited in that capacity. One thing though that we do do that we haven't done is exactly things like Jeff has looked at here. And this is one of the things that um, you know has been suggested and I would say you guys should do it moving forward is that anytime you're submitting a rate case, water or electric, because the PSC math is not great, as Jeff very eloquently pointed out, <laughs> that you submit a long-range cash flow to the PSC to prove your rate of return. And with your neighbor, we uh, made the many. The last time in 2019 we went in a rate case, we actually asked the PSC for a 12% rate of return because that's how bad the math you know, doesn't jive. Um, so obviously didn't quite get that, uh, but these are very capital intensive uh, enterprises, as Jeff pointed out, and it's expensive uh, to turn the lights on. So I would say that could be something that you actually request of who, whomever is doing the rate case to say we're not submitting this without a long range cash flow being done and then an action item by the board. So that's something that we have, you know, when we do a rate case for a utility, um, water or electric, that we automatically do. So uh, just that would be right. It doesn't matter if, if it's us doing it. Like yeah, a lot of people can sense. do well, this, but do a long-range cash flow so that you can see the the cash basis for the revenue requirement and the utility basis for the revenue. So it's big utility. We do that with all the great studies, and we submit that, and they just ignore us. They don't anymore. Oh, they don't. No. Okay. Yeah. So, so is is that a is it a pattern with smaller communities uh, in general, like the the calculation and the rate case? Uh, being off more, not that the PSC calculation is not adequately accounting for smaller communities as compared to 20, 50, 100,000. I don't communities. think it's size really doesn't matter, it's more the structure. I just didn't know if it, the the operation costs are more for less people. You know, it's like pro it's per proportionate, yeah. and yeah, they, it's proportionate. Um, it's all dependent upon how it's been financially managed. So the, the PSC's rate design is going to change with the size of the utility and their yeah. operating cost structure. Um, fortunately, the, the two biggest components, capital and debt, 
not a big component. Well, and, and you know, I'll say that, you know, I've been on the board about three years. Oh, no, it was way back in 1800s, but um, <laughs> no, <it was> there. <laughs> um, I've learned a lot about this because I had to. Um, and I think it's valuable. I mean, we never heard half this information or even that there was an issue until this last year, right? Mm -hmm. So by having an independent person look at it every year and come do a presentation to the board mm -hmm. and help them understand what they're looking for, how do you make good decisions if you don't have good information? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, some of it is not knowing on our part. Especially because it's such a big driver of revenues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really hard to understand until you break it down simply. Well, look at the first sheet I gave you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can develop templates that yeah. you can have all this data, monthly data, by changing one date. Yeah. You can have that monthly. And you yeah. can have that presented in your part of your packet. Instead of a treasurer's report, well, now you got all your cash flow, your rate of return, all that stuff. Are you in Lapan? My financial report is. 11 pages long. I have last three years of all that information, rate of return, cash flow, and then a roll in 12 months of the last three years. So any any sort of data that you could want. And that's easy to build. It's just hooking it up to Civic is, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it also helps like bringing somebody in that to can explain it so it makes sense. Hopefully, Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Well, it doesn't make sense. Sense. It's well, not, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm not going to make sense of the PSC, but yeah, it right. provides context. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so, looking at some of this stuff, I asked Brian here to see, and we don't have to decide anything tonight, but to look at options. And, and there's some options here um, for what to do with some of the money or what not to. I guess there's concern, or, you know, my thought was, hey, let's pay back what we still have. And let's just refinance the old, but with interest rates, that might not be a smart idea right now. Maybe, right. maybe if we can use some of it to pay the, some debt over time, and we can use some of it for other village capital projects at the interest rate it's at, like maybe a generator for the pumping stations or a roof on the building, mm -hmm. and not just spend it all, but it might be a good time to do that. So I just we talked to bond council, wrote up some options, and and. Mm -hmm. How much did we spend of that thus far? So it was well, one, we 1.2 million left. So it was one yeah. 1.7 total. It was right. Yeah. Of, is that new money? That was all new money. Yeah. Uh, no, no, some of it was debt uh, refinancing. The 1.7 was the new money. Oh, okay. The greater of that was the refinancing component. Yeah. Yeah. And you have 1.2 left. Something like that. Do you know exactly? How much you have left? Yeah. Uh, so it was not 1.2. Close. 1.2, yeah. 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 Um, some of it's in escrow for the transfer of the building progress. So, that's not of that. Some of the other ones. So. so, I can go into options um, on the debt. Um, as well, <coughs> just know there's the one. The reason I had them go back is. Yeah. You can actually, the robbing Peter to pay Paul bullet points, uh, freezer, lower the pilot. There's actually a whole other thing you can do too, and I, I think you've done it somewhat recently, so you may recall this, but you can change your public fire protection up to the water bill, so you're not charging it on the tax bill. And so ultimately you could, in theory, lower the income coming in of 57000 for the pilot payment from the electric utility but also lower that expense and make it an inline transaction on the water fund. So now you don't have that money going out from general to water. So it's kind of a between the two enterprise funds and the general fund, a way to maybe clean that up if you wanted to do the lower pilot. But that's not something you have to decide tonight. I'm just I looked yeah. up your water that tariff. James brought that up. Yeah. 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 So that might be because we already do what fifty percent of yeah. fire protection. Yeah. 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 So you could, yeah, do the, and that's 66000 so you'd be able yep. to cover that if you did the whole thing. Um, so what, as it relates to the debt option, so um, kind of going back to the issuance for uh, 2021, 
uh, those conversations, you know, started um, basically saying, hey, we're looking at the substation project. Um, we're looking at, um, you know, the needing 1.5 or 1.7, whatever it was for the substation at the time, and saying what kind of debt options can we have. And I provided, um, you know, kind of a slew of how we got to the actual issuance point, um, but ultimately that you issued what are called general obligation notes for the substation and then some refunding components as well. Now, one of the benefits is that that is not a revenue secured pledge, meaning that you didn't pledge to the uh, ultimate bondholders or those that you are going to repay the debt to that you were going to repay it with electric revenues. So ultimately, you can levy a tax uh, for this, even if it pays for the substation and we don't have the revenues from the electric utility in place for one year, let's say, because um, we're not getting our true rates in effect until... <laughs> Good job, Danny. <laughs> don't <get> busy. <laughs> hey, pick me up. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so just know that that it's one of the reasons we did that as well was because we knew all we were told there would be a rate case. We said we can help. Uh, ultimately, I, I think somebody else was helping already, and so we just talked about all right, should we do the geo or revenue? Uh, ultimately, decided the geo because also. The construction authorization wasn't in for the substation, and so therefore we said, well, you know, what do we want to move forward with this project? How tied are you to it? And if we're not 100% tied to it, now you definitely don't want a revenue security because you're promising those revenues of the um, electric utility, but you wouldn't be able to get it in your rate base if you said substation's not happening. So he just explained how the rate base works. So ultimately, that geo doing it on a geo basis, you can reallocate that to any public improvement you would want to. And then say, this is an electric debt, this is general fund debt. This is an electric debt, this is water debt. This is whatever you wanted to change it to, um, you can do so and reallocate. Um, so that is one uh, you know, good point here is that's just to know good, that- That's good to hear. Yeah. So ultimately the 1.2 of unspent proceeds you have uh, three years from the day to date uh, to basically say, this is what we're going to spend it on. Um, and so you still have time to do that. You'd have until 2024. So just know it doesn't have to be electric yet. So that's kind of doors wide open there. I, mean, we, you know, I don't even think in terms of finding projects, that's a whole other you know, board discussion. Uh, but just know that's out there. So for the 1.2 million or whatever. Uh, that doesn't mean we should just go spend 1.2 million. Right. 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 <laughs> no, I'm just, just know you can. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you have cash on the now, general fund side. Let me ask this in the meantime. So what does if we take 1.2 million dollars worth of obligation away from electric utility changes our outlook? Doesn't make us whole right away, but it really helps things going forward. I did run some of those numbers, and I'm curious what the new payment would be, yeah. like based on the 500. That might solve a lot of your. That's what I'm thinking. A lot of your challenges. Yep. Yeah, I think one thing it doesn't solve that is in his slides. Uh, I think like two slides prior is no your that alliance change. You know that purchase power that they increased that wasn't yep. included, which I think was two hundred thirteen thousand. Two sixteen. So mm -hmm. like that. You know. Yeah, we still got it. If you want to reduce the debt payments and kind of have a target, you know, that yeah. might equal itself out if it's only five hundred thousand to the electric utility uh, in total, and then that's going over the ten years. So if we reallocate that money from the substation, are we kind of kicking the can on the substation? I mean, it's already old, right? Right now, um, the substation, I'd say, put on hold, mm -hmm. and we're going to visit it later when the electric utility is in a much better position. So when that could be five years. It could be eight years. I don't know. Does so, it have a lifespan that long? I mean, well, the, well, the transformer is really a good backup for what we have. Okay. And okay. you want to you want to talk on this too, Sean? Yeah, it carries yep. the risk of not going with the substation. Yeah. Well, and and that's where Sean 
feels much better about having the transformer because and the regulators, which we want. Yep. Okay. As long as long as we got a backup transformer, that that relieves a lot of stress off of us. And as a utility, um, right now you only have one transformer. So if something was to happen where your existing transformer would fail, at least we know within a matter of time. Uh, Obviously, it's going to be fairly time consuming, but we got a spare transformer sitting there waiting to be put into service um, rather than trying to get a portable sub or try to come up with a different transformer. So it, it's it's the next best option of not having a fully built second uh, substation. And also on, on just working off of a, having a backup transformer, the one that is currently being rebuilt comes with like a what one or three year warranty or something i believe so i can't remember exactly if it's a one or a three off the top of my so head it, so i just had the thought would it make sense you know to actually put it into use and use the one that's currently in place as the backup then so that we make sure that while it's under warranty that it actually works so we don't find out seven years down the road that it works for two months and then. <laughs> uh, that's all I'd have to bring up to for our engineers. I, the, pro the problem is you're going to have a pretty significant outage to every one of your customers because you guys don't have a backup. I'll do it on a 97 degree day in July. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, hear the, I hear them are the best. <laughs> you know, and I brought up risk because, you know, we're seeing electrical stations being attacked right now, right? Like it's been in the news and we're, we're not any different than any other place. So if some, somebody gets a few beers and decides to take a pop shot at our, our substation, where does, where does that leave us? You know, are we, are we dead in the water for a week, two weeks, two hours? Like what is that? We have a transformer. That's, that's my number one concern about our utility. Yeah, I mean, security. Yeah. I could walk right up to that gate right there now and then, you know, throw a beer can at it, right? Like, it, it's not like a, it's completely secure in any way. So. And there's, 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 nine, I think there's nine transformers in the U.S. that could take out 75% of the population. Yeah. Yep. Nine. Yep. So, so that's, that's the kind of risk I'm talking about. You know, if we are, are Sean, are you comfortable that if somebody came and, and and shot up our, our, our substation, our transformer, that we would we'd have the resources to recover from that? Uh, honestly, I don't know how, how we would prepare for that no matter what. I mean, even if you had a transformer on the other side of town, I mean, who's to say yeah, they couldn't yeah, just yeah, right. shoot, <laughs> shoot both, <laughs> both of them? I mean, it, it, it's just... It's, put them right next to each yeah. other. The thing that's going to yeah, take yeah. you out is the transformer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All the steel fortress around the thing. <laughs> the Put an ar yeah. armed guard. So outside of reallocating, um, you, you do have other options as well. Um, you, you can restructure the 2020A issue, you know, because right now it's on 10 years, 20 years, um, but you would have to obviously issue additional debt in order to do so. So uh, the problem with that is the 2018 tax law, uh, you can't do advance refundings anymore. You have to do it on a taxable basis. Uh, so that comes with higher interest rate, not to mention when you issue the debt, you're at the bottom, you're at the valley. So uh, the interest rates have increased uh, since that time quite substantially. And uh, doing it on a taxable basis would increase it even further. So you basically take away the advantage of being a municipality when issuing debt. Um, so you can uh, restructure it, though. Just know you can to elongate the payment. So we did provide uh, an example. It was about, uh, in terms of the first six years, uh, $70,000 in terms of uh, savings uh, annually. Um, however, just know you're... The, the downside is the additional future value there is you're paying an additional 2.7 million. So that would be, you know, terrible financial management. I wouldn't recommend it. 8.2%? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Long cost. <laughs> yeah. So I, I wouldn't uh, necessarily recommend it, just we wanted to lay out all the options uh, that are available. 
if for whatever reason, um, as, as well, just know you can't go beyond that 20 years. So when you issue GO debt, there's a limitation on that in the state statutes to 20 years. Um, so even if you converted it to revenue, you wouldn't be able to go beyond, your clock has started uh, at, on 20 years. So even if you convert it to revenue, which obviously we wouldn't because that would be causing further problem, um, but just know that you can't go beyond that 20 years because uh, of the GO statutory rule. Um, and then the other option uh, that we provided was a full out defeasance of the remaining debt with the unspent proceeds. So we had been given the number that there's about 1.2 million um, in terms of unspent uh, proceeds and there's about 1.3 of additional uh, needed. Um, so the, the total debt service based on what we provided um, at the time that we provided this analysis was about 2.5 left. Um, so using 1.2, you have 1.3 left um, in order to pay off the debt service that you'd have to come up with somewhere anyway. So um, you'd be paying debt on something that you didn't service an asset with. So um, you basically have 1.3 of debt money. Um, and so obviously, um, that, that comes with a lot of explaining, um, and so I, I think the defeasance um, as well, you just know that was run at the full amount. You can do a combination of reallocation and defeasance. You know, if you're saying, well, we don't really have 1.2 million of projects that we can reallocate to, maybe we only have uh, 1 million, you can use that 200,000 for debt service, um, you know, as, as needed. So, um, be one thing. Um, there's also a question um, too about uh, arbitrage um, that was asked that I didn't cover in my email to them uh, in the email body, but it was covered and we got some questions and then we responded. And just because this is maybe somebody's thinking about this because we're not making a decision <clears throat> immediately, but basically you're yield restricted um, when you issue uh, municipal debt. Um, but that said, just know you, you aren't yield restricted for those first three years based on the small issuer and the par amount that you issued. So um, based on the arbitrage rules, um, I wouldn't be worried about the interest that you're earning on it uh, immediately. That will become a problem in three in 2024. Ten years ago. But yes, um, so that said, um, you know, there's kind of a multitude of options. I would say, though, you have the best flexibility you can have, the fact that it's geo notes that were issued, not geo bonds. If it's geo bonds, it's a little more explicit in terms of what you can reallocate those uh, monies for. So uh, that said, it's kind of, if you, like, reallocation might be part of it, um, it's just kind of a matter of what do you what do you do that for? And then if you come up with projects that you'd like to spend it on, send it our way. We can provide that reallocation at any time and then provide that to your auditors so that they're auditing that appropriately as you move forward so you don't have some liability sitting on the electric utility, even though it's now you know the Main Street project or you know whatever you decide to do. Or so I'd, I'd like to get that debt off the utility. So now, I don't think we should spend it all. Or even post <laughs> but I know there's some very needed projects, roofs and generators, um, that I don't think we'll find cheaper interest right now. So What's your current rate at? Um, One percent. One percent. Yeah, you. <laughs> It'd be silly not to do some of the things we do. Zero point two. Um, <laughs> so, I think we need to get some project lists together <clears throat> soon, mm -hmm. and I think we need to look at other debt that's coming due, mm -hmm. and yeah, some of it for debt allocation, right? Mm -hmm. Repayment. Um, because obviously, if you refinance the debt and gave that money back, it costs you more mm -hmm. with the interest today. Right. So it wouldn't make sense to do that. But I don't want to take away from all our, you I know, mean, our general fund is very healthy. Um, but I don't want to take away from 
our borrowing capacity too by just adding it onto the village without you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, I'll, I'll just it already is on your yeah I, it's going to be yeah. you know like in, unless you defeat but if we just but, spend it now it's gone yeah, yeah. so um, all right so that's it it's a balancing act between the different funds it is yeah. but it has to be done so. Anybody got any questions? We'll be talking soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and I also know that uh, your bond council, which is Quarles and Brady, um, said that if if you want them involved in terms of if you say you you come up with four projects and other ideas that you want, and you want to have a board meeting about it, they'd be willing to call in. So, okay. And she she was available by cell phone tonight if we okay. got that into the weeds, but I kind of told her probably not. But that said, I think it would be valuable to have them on yeah. um, at the time at which, because ultimately they'll be, you know, they're the ones that say legally, can you do this or can't you? Right, absolutely. Um, so just another way to, you might learn something if they're, you know, absolutely. If, if you have, an idea, and of course, we'll be filtering that information uh, via email correspondence in the interim. But if you wanted to have a board meeting about it, kind of live chat about it, I, I told her that it would be nice if she was available yeah. and she offered yeah. to be. So I would just say, come up with some ideas. You can come back to a meeting. Um, you, you have time, um, but obviously the debt services do. Um, and, and the one thing there is you do have the ability to levy for it as yeah. well even if you haven't uh, done the full reallocation yet. Um, the problem is you miss your levy window for 23, yeah. but you would be able to for 24. Okay, good, appreciate it. And yep. thanks for all the extra help with some of the other stuff. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody got any questions before we go on? Well, thank you very much. Well, thanks, guys. It was yeah. very Fine. good thank meeting. You. Oh, thank you. I don't normally like them this long, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, no. It was much needed. 19 yeah. depreciation rate was a composite rate. So that's signed by the PFC. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Can we have like a thanks. five minute recess? Yeah, we could. You want to take a couple of minutes? Yeah. Go ahead. I can get a drink. Everybody's back? Well, I just seen empty chairs. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go back. In session. All right. Number six, discussion action village board minutes from December 6th. I move approval. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Discussion action on building cleaning. Scott. Okay, after thinking long and hard about this, I have a presentation for the board. But um, I've got I've handed out a copy of it to all of you. Maybe take some time and read it. Um, the place was a mess. One of the biggest things I noticed when I came in and took the keys was that the mop bucket alone had this much filth in the bottom of it area that the mop bucket gets filled in hadn't been cleaned in years. The maintenance room, the janitorial room itself was in bad shape. Other things I noticed is that the tile walls and the, the, and the stall structures in the bathrooms had, hadn't seen a, a rag or a wipe down or a disinfectant uh, in a long time. So my proposal is um, just, I'd like to take over as custodian of the inner sanctum here. Um, 
I guess you, if there's any questions or comments, Bailey's informed me that her and her staff will take charge of the cleaning of the, of the library. Um, yeah, I think on, um, I was talking about more of a short-term basis that we would take care of it until we figured out what we were doing on like a long-term basis. Yeah. So. Um, Okay, so when that I came in. That might have been a miscommunication. Okay, that might have been a miscommunication. All right. Because I would ask her about. There's other bids too, though, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's other bids out yeah. there as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay, go ahead, Councilor. So, after running a restaurant for 20 years, I've got the background to keep things clean, nice. I take, a, I take an interest in what I'm doing. Uh, I don't expect it to exceed five hours a week, as a matter of fact. I came in on my birthday and worked three and a half hours. But leading up in December, I put in well over 25 hours just getting things to a level where they could start being cleaned again and kept up. I think all that was really happening was that the toilets were being pushed out, maybe wiped a little bit on the top and the seats, and there wasn't a whole lot else done. I don't think behind the toilets or the bases have been cleaned. And Forever, just the little details that make a whole lot of difference in what's going on. So, actually, I ranked the rest of them as about two out of ten, ten being the best. Um, um, a lot of the wooden doors, if you take a look at them tonight, they're all marred up, and they, you know they're in need of some loving care. Um, I did make a checklist of all the cleaning responsibilities that I could see, and that's listed on here. I'm take a look at that. Um, like your last sheet. What's that? The what we're paying for product now and what we can get it for. Well, that, that, <laughs> that actually, I, I stuck that in there and I was going to just ask for that to be an agenda item for next time, but that was a cost comparison. So Danny forwarded me the Quill invoices and I did a cost comparison between Quill and Amazon. There was actually an 18, almost 19% savings by moving products to Amazon. Either Amazon Business or just a time of time. Those are delivery uh, charges as well. About Amazon. It's not prime sometimes, or it's okay. No. Um, my wife works for Disability Rights Wisconsin, and uh, they have a uh, contract. Um, I'm sorry. Train of thought. I lost my train of thought. I was going somewhere. Else. Oh, uh, so, so I we use Amazon to buy some bunch of our stuff, but a lot of times there's delivery charges too. I just wondered if Quill, well, I figured it was free, but well, free, but I mean you're paying for you, the price. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Yeah, but Amazon yeah. also has some charges. Deliver. They have that might be product charges, but does that cover shipping? Because sometimes they do charge for shipping if it's not a prime item. We use we use some of that work. If trip. you're an Amazon Prime customer, shipping is always free. Not if it's not a Prime item. Yeah. If it's uh, fulfilled by Amazon. Yeah. If it's not. fulfilled by Amazon, it is. But there are things on Amazon that are fulfilled by not. Amazon. That's that's all I was asking. Something else. Are, still, all yeah. are we still just wants to make sure that we're factoring in yeah. shipping yeah. on that's the awesome. Amazon Prime? Yeah. Got it. Something else. Are we, we looking for bids? That's all for the best. We're getting discounted. So we're not going to do any action tower. Okay, but we can approve. We can approve him doing it. Until then, right? No, because there's other contracts that have been. No, done. no, no. Oh, temporarily. No, temporarily. No, until we, until the contracts, until we decide this. Well, I'm willing to take the responsibility for it. My, my proposal's in front of you, and. Yeah, well, I don't think we make. No. Oh no, no, not to make no. a decision. I'm just saying that I'm, a, yeah. I'm taking the time to apply for it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're just putting it in like everybody yeah. else. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. And like on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm usually over here twice a day. So, so the object is out for like eight months. He's gonna do it temporarily. Yeah. So, <laughs> no. well, so I'm, just, I'm worried if there's a snowstorm, can you get here? Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> another, yeah. That's a big deal. Shoveling. Okay. So that's good. And then we'll put it back on when the bids come. Yeah. 
So that would be fine with me. Yep. Yep. But the daily spot checking and stuff like that, um, <coughs> it's it's very important and it has, it has not been being done. And so, I mean, for as much as you'd like to think it was. It, I think they were just coming in vacuuming. They were vacuuming and, and emptying making, the trash. Well, well, they weren't even vacuuming. Whatever. They weren't even back. Oh, really? I knew she was going to say that. And that's why I asked, I went in and asked her, where's all the plugins on this one end? Yeah. You know? And then she said, that's when she said to me, well, we're taking care of all of this. Yeah. And I said, well, okay, well, I'll just leave yeah. that out then. But if I put that back in, that will be, I think it takes five hours a week. Change it and then put it back in with the rest. Is that coming and doing trash on the Is there any form that I need to fill? No, I just think it's just asking for bids, right? Um, yeah, I can send you the RFP too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just send that to me and I'll. So I'll what about right. temporarily? You know, he's, he's doing it temporarily and he spent, what, 25 hours? I spent well over 25 part -time, hours in December. Part time and I did. job right there. It, are we compensating for that? or what I, are am, I am asking and invoicing. I'd like to invoice $250 for the month of December. And that's a volunteer thing, though. You'll offer it. Yeah. Just watch the toilets. But is there, well, I'm saying the $300, or it would cost us $300 in the month of December. Yeah. It would have if we pay it. Mm -hmm. I mean, 250 I can guarantee you the level of the clinic yeah. is way up. I mean, <laughs> but just from a, I mean, I'm just playing devil, just from an audit perspective, mm -hmm. do you have the hours more than just 250 I mean, you've got an invoice that says custodial cleaning service rendered in December of 2000. There was well over, there was close to 30 some hours involved in it total. Yeah. Do so you have that documentation? I, I never documented I No, I came over and worked on my birthday. I came over and worked on Okay. I mean, that's the amount of hours that I took. It's just hard for someone to say that they'll volunteer to do it and then, oh, by the way, here's my invoice. I said I checked the toilets, Danny. I ended up cleaning the whole facility. I get that, but. but so, but. I think but you, have so you either accept it or you don't. Something. And I don't yeah. think you're any part of the discussion. Okay. But I think, a, from what I remember of that conversation, I would say he went above and beyond what he volunteered for. And I just leave it at that. And we can decide. I agree with that. that. He went above and beyond what he volunteered for. Yeah. And keeping the building where it needs to be and, needs, and there's a long way to go with it yet. So. But it's hard to do it. It's hard to do it. That's right. If you don't want to pay it, that's fine. Um, with, I'm with not saying it's all. I'm just saying it's hard. It's, it's, not, it's not the way you want to do it. We would have spent it on the $300. The $300 on that. That makes sense. Didn't we? We didn't pay them, though. Or we, we didn't pay them, but wasn't there some other. There was something else that we talked about last time that. Um, we're like, oh, well, we have an extra $300 a month or something until the time. I'm rambling now. I could have sworn <laughs> there was some small expenditure that we approved. Well, I'm not saying we shouldn't reimburse them. I just don't know. It's hard to do it after the fact. Yeah. Right? No. And, you know, I, I know I know when you guys probably were cleaning, I guess it was probably on the clock, right? Mm -hmm. So, just saying. It's a tricky position to be. It is yeah, a tricky. It is a shitty position. So, um, I'd say, well, I'm like, and next board meeting we'll decide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's included in this packet, I think. I would think. I think they're maybe asking for a more line item type. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, just come up with a quick that. line item thing. Well, I can do that yeah. too, if you want me to. Sure. Yeah. I'll be happy to provide that. All right, discussion action, clerk's office update, financial reports. Any? Um, so our fees were sent out for the cleaning and the um, municipal planning. Um, so those both have new due dates of February um, 3rd, which is a Friday, the Friday before um, the March 4th meeting. So that gives people plenty of time to submit, and um, that will be part of March. Um, that was posted on the site that um, we talked about last time with the uh, architect services for the library. Um, so it got sent out to a huge list of cleanups in the area. Um, 
So hopefully now that it's through the holiday, we'll start getting um, more responses. Well, um, up until that time, do you want me to just turn in my hours on this sheet? Somebody's going to have to clean the place until we get a service in here. We're already past that now. <laughs> Can't go back to it. No, um, but I'm talking about yeah, I keep track of it. Keep track of it? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, so go ahead. Um, so just waiting for more of those to come in. Um, I'm extremely busy with property taxes coming in. And there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands coming in every few days. Um, your stuff has just been absolutely overwhelming for the end of the year. Um, but we're getting through it. Financial reports. Um, here, again, I haven't had a lot of time, to be honest, haven't had a lot of time to go through and tweak anything. So it looks pretty similar to last month. Nothing really has changed. Uh, with the title that I mentioned last time, just that day to day is <laughs> coming up way more than uh, the titles for it. So, um, even with that, um, this will be so it says the month ending December of 2022, but this is just reflecting all of November since December hasn't been updated yet. So, just keep that in mind for, um, for that. Um, then we're rolling right into audit, so we have a bunch of stuff due um, <clears throat> starting in January, February, um, March will be audit time that the auditors will be here to go through all the stuff. <coughs> uh, you know what's on the docket? Um, let's see. We have um, the garbage and recycle contract switch over. Um, it's been nonstop of calls with people, questions about delivery all that kind of stuff, and then um, as we talked about earlier, the rate case is wrapped up and um, rates will go into effect for um, January. You'll see that on February's bill. So there's a lot of work that has to be done in the system to update rates, make sure things are classified correctly, and uh, billing's right. Um, so kind of a couple things, and they're all kind of rolled into the same general thought process. Uh, so it, it, it just sounds like you have so much work coming in like that it's not manageable. So one thing, uh, and I'll kind of work backwards on it, with all the golf calls coming in for garbage, um, is it, are you hearing like repeatable questions that could possibly be mm -hmm. put on the website and instead of talking for 20 minutes, they just go to the website that and answer it there. And then also, did you put an automated call direct to Paul Terry then on um, the phone? That was suggested. Um, Suggest it. I like that. Um, um, yeah. We're gonna have it as Let them That's a good idea. I mean, that could just be a tomorrow's gonna be the worst. Selection and just <laughs> yeah. push. If you have garbage questions, push, push there. Yeah. yeah. And that goes. I would, I would put. I would try and bump it up to one. So <laughs> you listen past two. Yeah. 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 So Especially for the next two months. Well, the first ones, please talk. Right. Yeah. They're not gonna. Yeah. 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 So and then okay, so we have some options. The yeah. auto call, I think, is yeah. a, a great suggestion there. Um, and then kind of it just kind of ties back in with what Jeff was saying and making sure that we're entering in our numbers correctly. Are, do you feel like with the with the financials and the taxes and everything coming in that you are able to enter that in correctly without errors, you know, and not due to competency but due to other responsibilities taking you away because you're in the middle of entering something and then got to answer a phone call and go back and oops, you missed a line or something like, like that. The worst. What we're yeah. entering on, um, for like the electric side would mostly just be Vanguard bills. Mm -hmm. So, but like, like all the, all the yeah. bills, taxes, Vanguard, water, everything coming in, that's a lot of numbers coming in all. It's like, do you feel like you, and please be honest here, you know, uh, do you feel that you're able to handle that on your own and in the capacity that it's coming in or do you need extra help uh, for that, I and mean, I just feel like it's kind of a perfect storm of things because right. it's not. We're not always collecting property taxes. We're not always going through a contract switch. So if we if we yeah. brought somebody in to do like data entry for a month or two months, you know, to help offset that to make sure that we get those numbers in correctly, is that you know, I'm not saying that's what we're going to do, but if, you know, if something to that effect, would that help 
you and the author? I mean, it's, it's hard to say. We do have a lot of repetitive stuff because it's right after, I mean, even for the utility side of um, the guys will be getting their feed sheets 10 days. <laughs> Um, and then it's right into and then you're you're hiking. entering all 2, that two thousand will us. That does but it's like two thousand meters that we're entering. Right. And manually. <laughs> so yeah, she's got forty the, hours. Beth does of just sitting punching number in for each customer. And I've done that a bunch before. So forty hours of that, and you're easy to put a six instead of a nine. Yep. Or yeah, yeah, and eight it, it happens. Zero. I mean, we'll have monthly checks of maybe we wrote it down. Rereads and stuff. Yeah. Rereads, so oh, maybe she keeps something. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of human error in the way that reads. Yeah. The, 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 the problem is a lot of people that manage data entry type operations, they think, oh, I can key this many in 10 minutes, therefore I can key linear that many in right. 60 minutes. Like, no, there's fatigue. You can do 15 right. minutes and then five minutes off, and 15 yeah. minutes and five minutes off, and then the phone rings, and then your brain gets distracted, mm -hmm. and then you. And that's what I'm worried about is yeah. the, the fatigue of answering it all in and then the multitasking, you know, because... What can be taken off your plate to make it easier? Yeah. Um, not quite practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's, now you can't get <laughs> paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no that, I mean, that's the difference between her working right. on something and somebody else just sitting at the desk. Is that something? Like, I mean, yeah, is that something? Do you... What do you need to do? Right. Can we bring in somebody who's, you know, a, a stay-at-home just an office for ten hours? And yeah. is it sensitive well, enough yeah. that we can't do that? I, think or? I mean, oh. I'm, I'm not so I don't sure want to get so off topic of, for just a joke. Yeah. I don't want to get yeah. that's fine. Just for posting. In February, I plan to have a closed session to talk about health issues and, and maybe or contracting services out of something. Okay. Is that too late? That's what, I'm that's what we're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. Are you thinking through property taxes in a week and a week and a half, right? Yeah. So that isn't going to be the full month of January, though, doing that, right? Yeah, 31st. Papers. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 So most people are trying to get it in by the end of the year, still. We're getting yeah. huge payments from uh, mortgage companies. Just right. Like, uh, just $250,000 on it. And Wow. What clients are those? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's like that's hard. I know that's hard. I'm getting so wow. Okay. It just seems like a, you know, the wave of mm -hmm. things that just right. at the peak, and I don't. I just don't want to overwhelm you, and I, and then you know we do an audit at the end of the year, or do our yearly thing that you're suggesting, and then it turns out like, oh well, January was really bad, and you know, no fault of your own, but fault mm -hmm. of us because we didn't offer anything to help with that. Um. I've been talking to our auditor a lot, so he's been a good resource of where to put things. Okay. Um, and then obviously Lydia, she'll get me her numbers at the end of the year, and I've never been a part of that. I wasn't right. shown that, but it, I mean, it's two columns. You have have your kayak, your construction, your your aiding in. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your construction. You have your work in progress. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and you know, it's just this goes to here. And our numbers, our account codes are not the same. We don't have the same GL structure, but the names match, and it's just putting. I just want to make sure we're not going to lose you because you're going home pulling your hair out at night. You guys <laughs> well, anyway, but yeah. Like so much. Yeah. It'll be a lot better after. after the done. Going through. Yeah, February is good. So, yeah. Awesome. Yep. Okay. You can always call me on if you want. Sorry to derail. No, no, you're on. Asking. All right, anything else? I'll make a motion to approve financials as presented. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Invoices to be paid. What was the name of our cleaning company? King King. Our, our cleaning company? Donut King. King King. Make sure they're not on here.
Um, the lawyers, the ex, actually, yeah. used to say if it was school or um, like what it was related to. That was the school transfer. Um, but it doesn't say anything anymore what the um, what they were. It used to say like police or oh, yeah. or. Um, and that was so for the school say, transfer deed, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so I modeled this. So the check register. I don't know if you guys wanted both the check register and the the other one that you normally saw. So that one was just what was presently in the system. This was this one that you have. The check register has the check number associated to it that it was created as a check. Um, that's what Cross Plains has for their. Um, I'm kind of curious what it was for. Well, yeah, I just yeah. kind of so so yeah. make sure it's not like the police. and Because yeah. the police doesn't count for us. That's the transfer of the school property. The okay. Property. Yeah. And there's also the the, um, an update to the Lakers restitution. Um, so the um, uh, there is a update to that. So it's $225 we'll be receiving per month. Um, for restitution. So, so will that pay back to the from Vanguard? Is that for us? Well, we we really paid for it. So I mean, it's old so our utility. Yeah. <laughs> not from Vanguard. It's old our utility. And that was part of um, the legal fees that they went to court and renegotiated that from one seventy five since they asked for two. And that can be Just uh, analyzed ours. annually. <laughs> Was that um, That can be changed or looked at and then we can request. Depending um, on income at the time, and you can request yep. to know what their income is. Yep. Do we do that annually or is that? Well, oh, this first time. So. First time. Okay. Before that was off court order. Now it's collection. Uh, or, uh, um, okay. Okay. All charges at CalSure, McFarland's, and Midstate. I didn't know that you could buy anything for seven dollars and eighty-eight cents. Oh, I know, I know, I do. <laughs> was that a nut? Uh, which one do we got here? So McFarland's was uh, the forty-one dollars. Yep. That's basically just a saw or a weed trimmer for trimming brush. Okay. Uh, Mid-state equipment is for snowblower parts, uh, an air and snowblower. The other one you have? Yeah, sure. sure. For seven dollars uh, and eighty-eight cents. for a hydraulic cylinder. Yeah. Okay, so, and so it was like a yeah. pin or a nut. <laughs> yeah, basically. I just, yeah. I, it was no mostly line. a joke about I did not, I did not have to be done. Yeah. So that's a cheap thing. Yeah. All right. I would move approval of the invoices to be paid as presented. Second. All right, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Discussion action on what? <laughs> on what? <laughs> you trying to split me up? Um, <laughs> All right. I had to amend it because um, I forgot to put the board minutes in, but that was late for that. Okay. Sorry, no number 10. Uh, reports. We haven't had a Vanguard meeting. Sean, when's our next one? Uh, December 17th, 6.30, our shop. All right. Um, Did he January say December? Uh, say that again. December's over. Sorry, January. <laughs> I have a wrong <laughs> January. I don't know. I still, I still don't want to admit it's January. Say it all you want. You're not getting it. Okay. That's the same night as the parks, parks thing, yeah. right? Uh, what was that? Yeah. What day? Seventeenth. Yeah, it's the same as parks. you have anything for an electrical superintendent, Sean? Yep, yep. Um, so we made it through the kind of crappy weather we had. We had a couple little outages, but nothing major. So we got pretty lucky there. Um, last week, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but uh, our entire village took a, took a blink, uh, just a momentary blink. That was uh, on Alliant Energy's um, substation over by Mazo. They had a, an arrestor fail, which knocked out the transmission for just a fraction of a second. So you guys may have seen that. Um, got the Christmas decorations down today in Black Earth. Going to be doing Mazo's tomorrow. Um, we're going to be starting tree trimming here very, very shortly. I would say in the next week or so. Um, that's for the most part it. All right. 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Fire District, Mike Hale, haven't had a meeting. Have we you? have not had a meeting since our last board meeting, but our upcoming meeting is on January 12th. Um, okay, Dean Iowa. Uh, we had a very short meeting on December 15th, just approved bills, and there was no discharge violations. Okay. Next meeting? Uh, third Thursday of this month. Okay. Um, 19. All right. Thank you. EDC, we have not met, nor have we set one up. EMS committee. Uh, we have not met. We yes. should be meeting January 12th at 6.30. All right. Library board. We met on December 20th. We discussed the cleaning contracts, and Bailey was going to be working with Danny. Uh, we had the library, they had a very successful silent auction and raised $2,700. Uh, they do have a trivia night planned for February 4th at Mesa Base Camp. We had a long discussion in the library RFPs that were received. We narrowed it down to four, and Bailey setting up now scheduled interviews and interview questions, and next steps will be coming. And Bailey has been selected as the Awards and Honors Committee Chair for the Wisconsin Library Association. Lovely. Kudos to her. And our next meeting is January 17th, and I'm sure she'll have plenty to add to that. But. All right, so I'll try not to um, repeat anything, but um, we have early literacy play dates coming up in January, so the first one is tomorrow. We're very excited. Um, I have an adult craft night planned. Um, we're making Scrabble tile coasters for February 16th. Um, registration for that opens at opens on January 23rd, um, and it'll be limited to 20 people, and there will be a wait list, and that's just so that I know how many supplies. Um, we're also doing a staff pick Guess Who, so staff are going to recommend a book, and then patrons have to guess. And um, they'll get a prize for writing. Um, and we are still working on finding a date to conduct interviews for architecture firms, um, but we're well on our way. We've got interview questions and a rubric, so um, ready to go. We just got to set it up. <laughs> um, and yeah, our next meeting is January 17th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Public Works. Scott. Public Works took Christmas off. Oh, that's right. So we did not meet in December. Um, uh, the next meeting will be January 23rd at, did I say Terry? 4.30. 4.30. Is that yeah, what? I yeah. think it's 4.30. And Matt, I know that it hasn't been cold enough to have ice skating. Yes, so the ice skating rink is up. Um, don't have great ice, but there have been people using it. Oh, good. Wasn't it too bad last little, week? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's been still open, closed, kind of playing around with that. Um, if the weather does cooperate, we'll try to maybe put a new layer of ice on it. Um, that's going. Uh, I did get the information all to Wisconsin surplus for buildings at Hoover's, whether or not we get any bids on them or not. It's worth a shot. Uh, a couple signs. Stop signs had to be replaced, um, got hit. The school zone DOT signs that were still on Mill Street here were down. Um, contacted DOT months ago when we knew the school was going out and haven't done it, so we just took them down. Do you take the poles down too? Yes, I'm waiting to see what DOTs. I assume we'll be able to at some point, okay. but I'm kind of waiting on that. We're gonna do. Um, I had to do some locating, I guess, survey work type thing for uh, the walking path along Rips property just to start cleaning up that um, very overgrown walking path. So we're going to be doing some tree trimming hopefully this winter for that. Depending the weather, uh, had started a conversation with Premier Co-op about trying to do our South Street connector road down there. Uh, so I'll have the information for Public Works. Next meeting, uh, Christmas tree is picking up. As Sean stated, holiday lights, Christmas lights are down. Uh, meter reads, installs, a couple checks on some of those meters this month. 
We had some really crappy, heavy, wet snow, ice we've been dealing with, equipment, maintenance, repairs, just doing that transition from fall over to winter. So, weird weather. Yes, it is. Winter in a row. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Oh. Eric, uh, the Parks Committee has not met. We are going to have a open forum for the village uh, community to come and uh, have an engagement with us to talk about the future of parks and, uh, and hopefully get some feedback on what the community would like to see um, the Parks Committee um, put our resources to. Is that on the 17th, too? Yes, and what I was just going to ask, where do you all have your, hold your meeting? We're Zoom. Oh, Zoom? Yes. Okay. We'll okay. still be Zoom. I'm anticipating this yeah. to go a little longer and okay. we do ours yeah. here. So yeah. perfect. We're still Zoom, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. I think we mm -hmm. had discussed at our meeting uh, yeah. that like, we might be a little late, but yeah. Yeah. So, so we're aware. Of and <laughs> parks are at we're um we're at six. six. We're at seven, right? Yes, we're, we're at we're, we're six, and I'm expecting, I'm hoping that it goes longer because we have that much engagement. Um, Danny did. I received an email comment, but awesome. they're not able to make it, but they would share some thoughts. Awesome. Uh, so Danny put that in the letter <coughs> this month, I believe, two months, two months and then uh, I reach out to Joe when I've talked a little bit, and it's going to be in the newspaper as well. Okay, okay. perfect. Very so, cool. And then I made some flyers. Awesome. So yeah. hopefully we get a lot of participation there. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, police committee, I don't think we met. No, we have not met. And Jen's there's not. no plan, and Jen's not on, and <laughs> Pam's not here, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But we will have one soon now because the officer did start. Yep, one question. He did. He, yeah, yeah, he's, he's done. done. He's been on. I saw. I saw. About a week. Yeah, for a week. Awesome. He's done some. It's been a lot of activity down in that end. Yep. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, right. so I don't, yeah, I don't know when the next meeting is. Any other business would be brought before the board for future agendas? I need people to think about committees and stuff to think about money mm -hmm. and projects. Projects. Right? Projects. But there's going to be a limitation on what projects can be funded with it. Um, it kind of sounds like it's pretty open, but I'm sure there it's is. Pretty open, there's very few restrictions. Equipment is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so just bring all the equipment. Okay. And I'll let us know which ones aren't going to work. Yeah. Uh, anything else anybody would like to bring up? The RFP for the planner and the crew. Okay. okay. All right. Next meeting will be February 7th, 2022, at 6 p.m. I'll make them. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, I cut you off on 13 there. No, that's all right. <laughs> I hope you got a little too jumpy. You knew where I was going with it. Um, Okay.